catch the J.P. Peterson Show Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. In the meantime, check out... Sports. Three, two, one. Let's start. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to Fan Stream Sports. Nothing, nothing but pure sports. This is the JP Show. JP, it is so good to hear you back on the air. Stand by now. Here's JP. All right, it's game day, baby. It's game day. Welcome in to. A Friday game day edition of the J.P. Peterson Show as the Bucks and the Steelers come to town tonight. Mike T. back in the place where he won a Super Bowl with the Steelers many, many years ago. Maybe not as much on the line tonight, but if you're Kyle Trask or Baker Mayfield, maybe it is. Uh, welcome into the J.P. Peterson Show brought to you by the great folks at the Jeeves Law Group, J-E-E-V-E-S, lawgroup.com at Bay Area Modern Medical Center. Chris Lugo will join us at 11.45 to talk about your physical fitness and your health. He's been working in the ICU this week. Maybe we'll get some interesting stories from the ICU. Good morning to you, Nick Geddes from On3 Sports. How are you? We have finally made it. Like you we said, I'm doing amazing. This is the first time we are going to see Buccaneer football in some fashion since the debacle known as the wild card game Ugh. against the Cowboys that wow. we all had to sit through. You had to be in the stadium for. We're officially turning Oof. the chapter on one era and opening up another. And dare I say, given that I don't know how much these guys are going to play, but these next two preseason games, starting with tonight, are the most important preseason games for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, at least in the last 10, 15 years. I think, is that fair? Yeah, I think, you know, especially the last couple of years, the preseason has been a really kind of an afterthought. Correct. Um, there really wasn't much to do. The roster was set. The play, you know, everything was set. It was just avoiding injury was the number one uh, objective. And that's completely a 180 this year. So many of these young players are going to be critical to the Bucks' success this year, and we have to see how they play under the bright lights. And obviously no position more important than the quarterback position. And our good friend Ira Kaufman breaking the story yesterday at uh, JoeBucksFan.com that he has been told by reliable sources within the building that Baker Mayfield will be starting in Minnesota on September 11th. And while there's been a lot of pushback in the local media, I, for one, believe him. Uh, I know who his sources are. I know who he's spoken to. I may have spoken to those same people. And um, I believe he's spot on. I believe he's spot on. And, and that doesn't mean that this quarterback competition isn't real. I think, you know, Kyle Trask can prove to himself and prove to the Buccaneers that he deserves a shot this season. I think it's fair for the Buccaneers and especially Todd Bowles to say, let's have a quarterback competition. Let's give Kyle Trask every chance to win this because that will bring out the best in both players. And if Kyle shows us that he's ready to play football, then we'll start Baker the first game and we'll see how it goes from there. Is that fair? Well, it, it, it's, it's fair. Both things, I think both things can be true. There could be a quarterback competition – and the Bucks could be smart enough to say there's no reason in the first game to have a starter who's never started before in right. the NFL throw him out on the road in the loudest, maybe the loudest building in the NFL when I have a starter here who's got 68 games under his belt in the NFL, right. who, who's been there, done that. I mean, that who gives you the best chance to win? Unless Kyle Trask comes out and looks like Dan Marino, then – yeah. Baker's going to get that yeah, start. I was, I was going to say that. Kyle Trask, as much as I think he has held his own in camp, and maybe that's putting it, I think he's been really, really good in camp. And some people will tell you he might have been better than Baker Mayfield, right? Um, his chance of getting this starting job, he's going to have to, like you said, I don't know if he's got to be like Dan Marino, but he's got to significantly outplay Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield has got to throw interceptions 
in these preseason games. He's got to have turnovers, miscommunications, whatever it is. He's got to look inept, yeah. basically. Right. And Kyle Trask has got to be competent to to really good back there. He can't look like C.J. Stroud last night. Right. That would close the door really quickly, exactly. I think, on the Baker Mayfield Kyle Trask discussion. Exactly. So I don't think it's like any breaking ground or anything like to say like, oh, Mayfield's probably going to be the starter in Week One because we've always assumed that. But mm-hmm. Kyle Trask has kind of opened our eyes that maybe, you know, there's a chance. But more than ever, like I said, these preseason games, I think, are going to dictate who's going to be that guy in week one. Well, we, and we were just having this conversation about C.J. Stroud and some of these these rookie quarterbacks. I don't think it's a great idea for C.J. Stroud to be this, named the starter week one, even though the Texans aren't going anywhere. That doesn't mean C.J. Stroud is not going to be the starter by midseason, by the end of the season. You know, what you want, the the ultimate goal for C.J. Stroud, and by the way, Kyle Trask and Baker Mayfield, is to be a productive quarterback moving forward for this franchise. So what is the best strategy for that? For me, it's exactly what they're doing. Let's have a, a bona fide quarterback competition to see who's going to excel in training camp. Folks, this is training camp. And as much as you want to simulate what a regular season game is, you cannot. You cannot because, by definition, it's training camp. And so the whole idea, if you were saying, we're having a quarterback competition, and by the way, Baker's going to start the first game in Minnesota, um, both things can be true. And, and, and so if that – because if you just said right off the bat, there's no competition, Baker's the guy, all the, you're, all the, you're telling Kyle Trask right away, you got no shot. You're not going to get the best out of him, and you're not going to get the best out of Baker Mayfield. So and I think this is the best strategy of all. Both can be true. It's still a competition, and if Baker goes out there and falls flat on his face, you've now given Trask enough reps and you've seen enough from him with the first team that you can ease him into possibly <laughs> starting some games. And I think that's where their head's at all along. Yeah. I don't think we're going to go this entire season and not see Kyle Trask get a bona fide opportunity to start some games. If that does happen, he doesn't get a bona fide opportunity. You know what's going on? Baker Mayfield is the comeback player of the year. Baker Mayfield is Geno Smith. And if that's the case, you know, sorry, Kyle. If Baker Mayfield comes out and, you know, throws four touchdown passes and no picks in game one and, and, and you know, and keeps it going, well, then you found a guy who was a first overall pick, who has finally matured, is in an offense that works for him, and everything's great, and we're, you know, we're farting confetti. Right. And, and keeping in mind, too, and again, this is just the preseason, but I think the opponent tonight is pretty significant because it is Pittsburgh. It is a Mike Tomlin coach team. And what are, we, what are the words we associate with Mike Tomlin coach teams? We, we preach discipline. We preach physical toughness, all those kind of things, you know, mm-hmm. getting the X and O's down right. And so even though it is the preseason, their starters are going to play tonight. I think Mike Tomlin has confirmed that. You'll see Kenny Pickett running the offense, all those things. I think it's a good litmus test specifically for Kyle Trask, regardless of it's the second stringers or the third stringers, because it is a Mike Tomlin coach team. And on the other hand, Baker Mayfield, let's remember, he's played against the Steelers a lot in his career. He's 2-5 and five against the Steelers during his career, but he has that experience. So... Maybe there's something in an advantage maybe there that he's familiar with these type of things. I don't know. It's a defense that he's seen It's a and defense knows. that he's seen and yeah, knows. I'm absolutely. not saying he's performed well against it, but right. he has experience. So I do think in a weird way the opponent tonight actually is a big deal. Yeah, and I think that physicality, especially up front that the, that the Steelers bring defensively, is going to be a tremendous test for the Buccaneers' offensive, offensive line. Yes. That's one the of the <laughs> things I'm really going to be tuning into is where does that line of scrimmage go? You know, is it going backwards or is it going forwards? That's going to be because I want to see if Cody Mauck can handle the physicality in the NFL. Yeah. I have my doubts. And get a key on an island on right tackle as well. Exactly. Though that right side of the line, I want to see what they can do. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying Cody Mauck's a bust. And that's not what I'm saying. But what I've seen in training camp, his size and the way he play, I, I don't think he's ready for the NFL defensive lines right now. And he will get better, obviously. <laughs> It, there's re- there's no reason for him to to be be ready for it unless he's an off the charts offensive lineman, which I don't I don't see him at that level right now. I can't miss kind of first round you know Zach Martin guy. I don't I don't see that. So this is th- this is going to be very much a, a a game where we can put on the film and see how did these guys hold up against a physical and fast front seven. 
Uh, I want to see the Buccaneers running game and see what's going on with the Buccaneers. Can they can they get some holes? I want to see what its offense create some misdirection and give these offensive linemen a chance because the, every play is not so predictable. I want to see Rashad White breaking tackles and 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 making the first guy miss. I want to see um, some of these young receivers if what they've done in camp is going to translate over on, onto the field. Trey Palmer, I've already seen Devin Tompkins do it on the field. I think he's going to take it to another level. But I'd like to see Trey Palmer. I'd like to see um, – Rakeem uh, Jarrett. Rakeem Jarrett. I'd right. like to see him and some of these other younger players step up. That's really what I'm looking for tonight. Yeah, they're all over the place. And even the defensive side of the ball, there's just so many different, like, battles that are going on and, like, certain positions and playing time – that are up for grab, whereas, like you said, in recent years, let's be honest, after the after the Brady came out of the game in the preseason, that's typically where my viewership kind of went away. But I feel like I have a lot of reason to stay through the continuation of the entire game tonight. And that's the first preseason game, but I really think so because there's just so many different battles all over the field and so many different rookies who are going to get opportunities, who have shined in camp. Excited to see my boy Yaya Diaby. I'm, I am circling him. I can't wait to see him on the field yeah. and how he matches up. I think up. the Bucks are really looking forward to that, Yeah, too. I've heard he's yeah. had a really nice camp and everything and is pushing JTS, and I'm, I'm excited to see it. You know, in some of the um, the one-on-ones I've seen with the Abbey, uh, and still you can't really get a feel for the contact until they get in the games, but he has a different thump to him. He has a different thump to him. You know what I've always said about JTS? He just, to me, you know, even though he's bigger this year, he's always been a little light in the pants. You know, he doesn't have that, that man strength, that, that man thump. Yaya Diaby has that thump. Wasn't and it the, and uh, that thump is, is, is critical in pass rushing to get that, get that tackle off balance, and then you can make your it, move. Isn't there like an analogy you used that maybe Warren Sapp said before? I feel like you've said it on this show before. What, what's that? Something about pass rushers, the guys on the defensive line and all that. Yeah. It's something that Warren Sapp said. I can't remember what you used to say. Well, let me paraphrase. I, I don't want uh, – I don't want pretty boys. I want <laughs> right. <laughs> I want it was something similar hood. to that. I want guys from the hood. Yeah. Yeah. But p- the pass rushing is, is a very, you know, primal game. You know, it's just man on man. I'm going to overpower you. Take your manhood. And it's, it's, a very, it's a very primal thing. Maybe the most primal thing in all of football. And moving people up front, getting around them, manhandling them. Um, yeah, that's what it is. You got to have an edge to you. You got an edge rusher is not just means you're coming off the edge. It means you got to have it. I mean, think of the great ones. Think of the great ones. Lawrence Taylor. Oh. You want to meet him in a back alley? No, <laughs> no, no. I mean, the great ones were mean. Mo uh, Reggie White, of course, was a gentle giant. But when he played football, he was a mean. He played mean. He's a mean sucker. He's a mean sucker. So I mean, the best ones have always been very angry men. <laughs> for the most part. And, you know, JTS is, you know, he is a guy with 41 shirtless photos oh on his Instagram. Yeah, well, they're not there anymore. You chased, you and you and intern Kayla back in the day chased him off. You do what you got to do for the good of the club. <laughs> uh, but listen, we make jokes, but JTS has put on some weights, and he know he knows. It's his, this is his year. He either shows, he, he's he can in, be that he's violent in the, for character. Me, for me, he's in the top five. If I had to list, like, the five bucks are the most important to this season, he's in that top five. Yeah, Drew Jetson said really is. you got to have some dog in you. you got to have some dog in you. Yeah, it might have been, yeah. been that right there. Yeah, that's you got you got to. You know, nice guys finish last up front. Nice guys <laughs> finish last up front. Um, maybe, uh, uh, who was it, um, Ali Marpet, me being the nicest offensive lineman that just manhandled. Yeah, people. or even Vita Vea. Vita Vea like, is super a nice. giant. Yeah, but um, yeah, they they play, they play a different type of brand brand of football. Um, all right, we got much more coming up on the Steelers and the, and the Buccaneers. We're gonna get to the Rays last night. A lot of there was a lot of bad stuff out there last night. I did not like. Um, so we'll get to that as well. Phil Mickelson betting a billion dollars allegedly, and a, and a lot on the Ryder Cup, which. Um, leads me to my next guest, is which is Gary Koch. Gary Koch, we were supposed to have him yesterday. had a little technical problem. We're going to get him on today. Uh, the uh, 2023 award winner of the Payne Stewart Award, the most prestigious award in golf, and so well-deserving. Uh, we're going to talk to him about that, uh, the game of golf, what's going on with the PGA and the Live Tour, and, of course, the FedEx Cup is up for grabs. The playoffs are, are up and coming. So some golf talk coming up next with uh, a Tampa Bay treasure. Our good friend Gary Cope, stay with us.
Group, J-E-E-V-E-S. Call for a free case evaluation, 888-9-JEEVES. That's 888-9-J-E-E-V-E-S. We're local, we're trusted. The law firm brings over 80 years of combined legal experience focusing on clients in Tampa Bay, the state of Florida, and national class action cases. If you're injured, get that free case evaluation, no cost to you. The Jeeves Law Group's focus is on auto, truck, and motorcycle accidents, as well as class action and consumer protection law. Scott Jeeves is a board-certified civil trial lawyer and a certified circuit court mediator practicing in the Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. You hear him on the show all the time. Great guy, big Gator fan, and great for the community. Jeeves Law Group is a highly skilled team with years of experience that will apply their skills, expertise, and knowledge to assist individuals who have been in an accident with compensation for damages, lost wages, medical expenses, pain and suffering, and property damage. Get that free case evaluation, 888-9-JEEVES. That's 888-9-J-E-E-V-E. size fits all approach like many clinics use they will monitor your blood work and adjust your treatment as needed for optimal results folks i've been on testosterone therapy for over is a life changer you will feel and look better than you did 10 years ago give them a call at 844-977-3477 or go to bammc.com tell them jp sent you for priority scheduling that's 844-977-3477 or bammc.com Coming back at you. Now, more with JP on Fan Stream Sports. It's only just begun. All right, welcome back to the JP Peterson Show, brought to you by the Jeeves Law Group, J E E V E S Law Group.com, and Bay Area Modern Medical Center, Italiano Insurance, and the Golden Diamond Source. All right, it's our pleasure to welcome in a man that is a Tampa Bay treasure and now has received the highest honor in golf as the 2023 recipient of the Payne Stewart Award. That acknowledges not only a great career on the course, but a huge impact off the course. And that's exactly what he's done nationally and certainly locally here with the first tee of Tampa Bay. Our good friend, Gary Koch. Hello, Gary. Congratulations. So happy for you. How are you doing? Yeah, thank you, JP. Uh, Truly uh, humbled and honored to uh, receive this award. Uh, You know, it's a it's a big deal. Um, My Former colleague Peter Jacobson said it very nicely. He said, uh, you know, you get into the World Golf Hall of Fame with how you play, Mm -hmm. but you win the Payne Stewart Award with how you conduct yourself and how you treat other people. So, uh, you know, kind of at the end of a career, uh, this is truly a highlight, no doubt. It's the Hall of Fame. I think it's more important than the the Hall of Fame, quite frankly. And uh, I think most people in golf would acknowledge that. And I think – if you could speak to what you've gone through the past couple of weeks uh, after being named, I saw the actual presentation of the award where you were surprised um, as you were, you were notified, take me through that story and what the last two weeks have been, been like. Well, JP, it was interesting. I got a call from PGA tour productions, which is, you know, the production arm of the, of the PGA tour. They handle a lot of the television aspects and video stuff. And they said that uh, they were getting ready to put together the 50th anniversary video of the Players' Championship. The very first one was played back in 1974 in Atlanta. And, you know, you've played in a bunch. Um, You've called the 17th hole for the last 25 years. You know, you've got plenty of stories, plenty of uh, experiences. We'd love to uh, come to the house, sit down, and and do an interview with you. So I said, okay, that sounds very legitimate. So they show up at our house here in Tampa, uh, set up the living room lights. I've got makeup on the whole bit. I've got this lady asking me these questions about 17 and about the players. And about 10 minutes in, all of a sudden, the front door opens and Tracy Stewart walks in with the Payne Stewart trophy. Awesome. Um, for a guy who has been paid to talk for the last 30 plus years, mm-hmm. uh, I was speechless. Uh, truly was. Just. Uh, 
didn't didn't well fortunately i didn't say what popped into my mind first which was holy you know what <laughs> so <laughs> i was lucky about that because yeah. the cameras were rolling but uh you know obviously it took a second but once uh you know once i kind of you know processed everything it was like oh my gosh you know to, to win the Payne Stewart award especially at, as i mentioned this stage in in life and in my career uh couldn't be you know more blessed well, it couldn't go to a better person, um, uh, and I think everybody universally acknowledges that, uh, Gary. And, and the, your work with the first tee here at Tampa Bay, um, I was reading, I didn't know this, is the largest chapter in the country. You've certified over 90,000 uh, of the kids in our area to participate in the first tee, and the, the lessons that these kids learn, the opportunities that they get are literally life-changing how important is that work to you and catch me up on on what's going on at rogers park etc yeah uh, jp obviously you know we see the results firsthand uh you know these kids you know learn about golf but as you mentioned more importantly they learn about the nine core values honesty integrity uh you know so forth and so on perseverance to where you know you you provide them the opportunity to be better people later in life and, uh, you know, we just see the examples day after day after day. Uh, the, our chapter and, and my family foundation has really gotten big into scholarships for, for these kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we currently have over 40 kids that have been part of the First Tee program on some form of scholarship, nice. you know, as they are able to further their education beyond high school. Uh, a lot of these kids are the first kids to ever go to college and their family. Uh, some of the letters that we get from the parents and, and the students themselves are just so heartwarming. I mean, you just know you're really doing some great work. Um, what we're finding, too, is a lot of times these kids that get the scholarships during the summer when they're out of school, they come back and they volunteer at our first T chapter. They're part of the summer camps and the group lessons. And, you know, they're just a great example to the younger kids as to what's possible. You know, if you do well in school, if yeah. you stick with uh, the first T program and, and do the right things that, uh, you know, there is that opportunity. There will be that, that chance to, uh, to better yourself and, and to make the most of you that you can from your life. So, you know, when we see examples like that, uh, it, it is very uh, satisfying and, and you know, you're doing the right things. You mentioned Rogers park and yes, our short course, you know, we're building a little nine hole par three short course that mm -hmm. uh, will be, you know, not exclusive for the first T uh, use, but it will be, first T will have priority to use it. It will be open to the public as well. Uh, the grand opening is scheduled for October the 30th. Uh, oh, nice. Our mayor, Jane Castor, will be there to uh, do the ribbon cutting ceremony with uh, Steve Smyers and myself and members of the first T and, and the YMCA and uh, Tampa Sports Authority. So we're excited about that. The course is coming along very nicely. We've had you know, a number of setbacks over the course of the last year. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think everybody's going to be very pleased with the final product. And as I said, not only will it be for the first tee, but uh, the general public will be able to use it as well. Gary Koch joining us here, the 2023 recipient of the Payne Stewart Award. And, you know, as you were talking about that, uh, they, had, they wanted you to talk about the Players' Championship. You didn't mention your line better than most because you're so freaking <laughs> humble. Um, but talk to me about, as we reminisce now over this career, I hope we can go down memory lane here with you a little bit. How, that Talk about that moment and just your affinity for having really become one of the best golf broadcasters uh, in the, of the last 30 years, obviously, that you've been doing this and, and how satisfying that has been for you. Well, um, you know, obviously it was a, a big decision at, uh, you know, the third, age of 38, uh, you know, I decided to leave a playing career behind and the opportunity came along to, to try television. Um, I enjoyed it right away, uh, like the team uh, aspect of it. Um, very fortunate. Uh, the early days there at ESPN, I had a great producer by the name of Andy Young, a great director by the name of Steve Beim that you know, help me get better. Uh, there is no way to practice, yeah. you know, doing television, covering golf. I mean, you know, you kind of get thrown in there and you either figure out how to swim or you sink. And uh, fortunately, I had a couple of guys early on that helped me a tremendous amount. I uh, ended up at NBC after six years at ESPN. Um, you know, again, great uh, producer, Tommy Roy, co-producer, Tom Randolph. 
Uh, Bucky Guntz was the director, again, helped me along and, and helped me to get better. And, you know, it's like a lot of things in life, JP. The more you do it, the more mm-hmm. comfortable you become, uh, the more you're able to just be yourself. And, uh, you know, uh, we've had great teams there at NBC, and, and you know, the pieces fit together. Uh, you know, I was never the funny man. That was never my role. You know, I was more the, the analyst type and, and statistics and the why and why not and so forth and so on. Uh, you know, Johnny was or Johnny Miller at the time was more the outlandish, you know, predictions and, you know, unafraid to be super critical at times. And, uh, you know, Roger Maltby on the ground had, uh, you know, a little bit of humor thrown in and, and you know, a great, uh, great way of telling the viewer what he was seeing in front of him. So, you know, everybody had their role. And, you know, I was fortunate that uh, my role actually fit my personality, which was which was great. And, you know, looking back, I mean, I literally I got to call Tiger Woods first victory on the PGA Tour. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was 1996. I was still at ESPN. It was out in Las Vegas when he beat uh, Davis Love in a playoff. Um, I was around through, you know, pretty much the height of all of his powers of doing things that nobody else had done. Uh, the better than most putt, a great example there at uh, the 17th green at, at Sawgrass in the players championship that Saturday afternoon. Um, you know, I think I said after the fact that, you know, you could hit that putt a hundred times and, and you'd make it once. Yep. Well, Tiger hit it once and made it. And, <laughs> and back then those were the type of things that he did. He did things that nobody else did. So I got to, you know, be involved in that. I mean, I, you know, every Ryder Cup since 1997 I've been a part of and been able to, you know, be on the call. So, uh, you know, looking back, uh, you know, somewhat disappointed that I'm still not doing it because I felt like I was still doing a good job by the, mm-hmm. when, when it came time for me to leave. But, um, you know, just looking backwards, uh, you know, I was there at the right time and really got to do a lot of wonderful things. So, can't complain at all. Well, I can tell you without yourself and Roger Malpe, it just doesn't sound right. It just doesn't. It doesn't sound big. It doesn't sound, you know, there's been so many changes in golf, and I know things evolve. But, you know, just personally, it just doesn't sound right. I miss your voice. I miss your humor. And, and I miss your, your, um, I miss your analysis. That We've lost this in all sports broadcasting, really. We've lost the thought of why we're watching. We want to know what's going on. You know, the, 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 you know, the ancillary stories are great, and I, I get that. But to me, I want to know what, what that person was looking at, what's going through their head, what's, what entails this shot, where does the creativity come in, what's the history here, what, you know, all that. And you guys encapsulated that so well. Is that, without putting words in your mouth, is that your philosophy in, in broadcasting? What were you trying to do yeah. in that moment? Well, you know, JP, whenever I listen to any sporting event, And I listen to, you know, whoever is the, quote, analyst or whoever is supposed to be informing me. I always look at it. Are they telling me something I don't know? Are they telling me the why? Uh, You know, and, and, you know, some some football analysts are just better than others in my mind. I mean, when I listen to a Chris Collingsworth or, you know, initially Tony Romo, not so much anymore. (laughs) Um, You know, I, I learn stuff from them, you know, and it wasn't as you say, the, the backstories of, you know, he went to college here and so forth and so on, but, you know, why a play was called or why, you know, a certain quarterback has, you know, limitations and can't do certain things. And, you know, those are the things to me when I watch a sporting event, if the analyst is, is informing me and teaching me or I'm learning stuff that I don't know already, yes. that to me is a good analyst. And, Unfortunately to me, what's happened in, in all of broadcasting and especially in sports broadcasting, it's got, become a lot more about the one-line quips yep. and trying to be funny or you know, Go saying viral. outlandish stuff yeah. to get clicks on social media. Yep. And um, you know, the business has changed. Um, the, the people, you know, how the people go about it, not everybody, I shouldn't say yep. you know, that, that's a little bit of a generalization because there are still plenty of people that do a really good job, Agreed. but the, the trend to me is, is headed in the wrong direction. Could not agree more. Gary Koch joining us here, uh, the Payne Stewart award winner of 2023, uh, in your playing career, uh, you know, we, we just did a great thing, um, 
out of Temple Terrace, I don't know, six months ago, or whatever it was, with your state championship team um, in high school here. And, and your career, the early playing career especially, was spectacular. And, you know, winning uh, the Florida Open at 16 years old, 1969. Um, do you remember that? What, what, how, how, the hell did, <laughs> how the hell did you do that? Well, um, you know, I, I made every putt I looked at, JT. <laughs> That's about all I can tell you. You know, it was played down in Lehigh Acres, and yeah, sure, I remember, you know, I remember an awful lot about it. Um, you know, it was just one of those weeks. And look, at, you know, by 16, I was, I was a good player. I mean, I, you know, I, I had won, you know, junior events. I'd won the state, Florida State Junior a couple of times already, and, uh, you know, the Babes of Harris Junior Invitational and, you know, some other things. So, I mean, I, I, I knew I could play. You know, but again, against the best amateurs in the state and the best, you know, professionals in the state, yeah. um, I had no idea. But I got down to Lehigh Acres, and I just, I liked the golf course. I started making putts, and I mean, I just made putt after putt after putt <laughs> for, for four days. In fact, I, I played the final round with this gentleman by the name of Pete Cooper. Mm -hmm. And Pete had played on the PGA Tour for a while, and he was elderly by this point he was probably in his you know elderly he was in his 50s so he he was off the tour and he was a club pro in florida and um we got done i ended up i think he may have finished second or third um and we got finished we're walking off the 18th green and instead of coming over to me and saying congratulations kid great going he looked me right in the eye shook my hand and said don't ever forget how to putt <laughs> <laughs> So that is probably the thing I remember the most, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, well, you had six wins, and, and one of them was Bay Hill. Um, what, what is your proudest moment of playing? And it may not be even in a win. Do you, uh, yeah, uh, probably probably Bay Hill, JP. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and especially the way I did it. You know, I often tell people, you never know when you when you are going to play your best golf or when you have played your best golf right. and your best round. Um, clearly that day, that final day in Orlando, uh, back in 1984 was the single best day of golf I've ever played in my life. I mean, and I, look, I've played a lot of rounds, yes. uh, started playing when I was eight and I'm now 70. So, I mean, thousands, hundreds, probably hundreds of thousands of rounds, but that was my best day. Um, I played uh, the first 18 holes. Uh, I hit uh, 17 of 18 greens. I made wow. eight birdies and 10 pars. Uh, that 63 got me into a playoff with George Burns, and then I birdied the 15th hole, first playoff hole, as did George, and then I birdied the 16th hole to win. Wow. So I had played 20 holes. I hit 19 of 20 greens in regulation, and I made 10 birdies and 10 pars. Um, if you ain't going to win that day, this, you're never going to win, right? <laughs> Yeah. Well, the beauty of it was now I had played in an exhibition at Longboat Key with Eddie Pierce, my high school teammate, yep. and Arnold Palmer and Gary Player in the spring of 1970, which was our senior year in high school. So I'm going to the 18th green and I'm going to tell the people at the ceremony and you know, all the fans that are still there that a lot of people won't know this, but I played with Arnold Palmer when I was 16 years old, 17 years old, and that he told me afterwards, I look forward to seeing you out on tour. And I, of course, thought at the time that's a nice thing for him to say. And here I am now, 14 years later, winning his tournament. We got on the 18th green. Arnold had the mic first. And he started with, a lot of people won't know this, but I played with Gary Cope when he was 17 years oh old God. in an exhibition in Sarasota, Florida. <laughs> I told him then he was going to be on tour, and now he's won my tournament. Isn't this great? That was the type of guy Arnold Palmer was. Wow. To remember that. Unbelievable. Wow. That's an incredible story. I did not know that. Uh, the King, man, just the best. And he was an, an yep. inaugural winner of the Payne Stewart Award, obviously. And and now, you know, you join just the giants in the game that have won this award. Uh, the inaugural winners were Jack Arnold, Byron Nelson, uh, mm -hmm. Justin Rose, Zach Johnson, Hale Irwin, Bernhard Longer. Uh, Jim mm -hmm. Fury, Tom Watson, Sir Nick yeah, Fulgas, I mean, yeah. on and on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Gary Player. Tom, I mean, how does it feel to be in that club? Well, um, you know, I've, I've reached out to a few of the guys that are friends. Uh, Nick Price, uh, for one, obviously Peter Jacobson, Brad Faxon, Jay Haas. 
uh, guys that uh, I've spent a lot of time with uh, playing with and then also talking about as a broadcaster, working with some as, as a broadcaster as well. And, you know, the, the message I've conveyed to them is, you know, it's just such an unbelievable honor to be included in such an illustrious group of, of not only great golfers, but gentlemen and, and how they conduct themselves, how they've handled themselves through the years, how they've dealt with the fans, how they've dealt with the media and, and the charitable aspect of, of all of their careers. So, um, you know, I, like I said, and I've told a lot of people this, truly a humbling experience. Yeah. Well, well deserved. All right, before we go, um, we got to talk a little bit about the tour because I want to get some thoughts, some thoughts from you. And a man that probably won't win this award, I'm gonna guess <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Phil Mickelson. <laughs> I'm just going out on a limb. Uh, just going out on a limb. Uh, it recently revealed that he may have bet over one billion dollars, which doesn't surprise me actually. Um, believe it or not and may have bet over $400,000 on the Ryder Cup. Uh, you know, Rory had a nice little quip, speaking of quips, <laughs> at least he could bet on the Ryder mm-hmm. Cup this year because he won't be participating. Does that, right. I mean, you know guys bet out there. He ain't the only gambler out there, as you well know. No. But this is, that seems, wow. Yeah. Yeah, he's not the only one for sure. Yeah. But, you know, I, I – Pretty, I think it's pretty safe to say he's the only one that's gone to that extent, yes. uh, you know, and, and those kind of dollar amounts. And look, I've met Billy Walters, the gentleman who wrote the book. Okay. And, um, you know, I have no reason to doubt that, you know, I mean, look, he ran one of the biggest, you know, gambling syndicates in Las Vegas uh, for years. Uh, and, you know, by all accounts, highly successful yes. uh, in, in sports betting. So, you know, for him to come up with these numbers about the number of big bets that that uh, Phil made and, and, you know, the the dollar amounts that he potentially lost. And, you know, I I have no reason to doubt that. I really don't, because I think, you know, Billy and his group would have kept very accurate records. I mean, you've got a guy betting that kind of money. You're going to keep track of it and, you know, how many bets he's making and. You know, I mean, the one quote was something about 7,000 bets in, in one year. And, I, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And, and and look, Phil has admitted it. You know, he had an addiction. And, and the, that's clearly what, what the case was. So he says he's addressed it and he's, you know, better and he's moved on. Now, I, you know, did he bet on the Ryder Cup? I, you know, who knows? I, I would hope not. Um, I would hope that uh, he would, you know, have had the sense to – even though he may have been that confident in how the U.S. team was going to do, yeah. that, that, you know, I mean, all you got to do is look at Pete Rose as an example of that. Exactly. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't work. You can't be betting on your own team. Yeah. So uh, I, I hope and pray, you know, for Phil's sake that uh, that, that is not, not true. And, and it's been a couple months since the announcement of the merger, um, and I still – having digested a lot of different media don't know what's going to happen. I, I talked I talk, I talk to your, your good friend of mine, Tracy West, who uh, runs the Vals bar and is involved in uh, so many tournaments on the PGA tour. She doesn't know. Um, it seems like everybody is in the dark. What do you know? What, how is this going to look? What's it going to be like? When are these, are the live golfers going to be welcome back? What's the punishment going to be? I mean, do, what do we know? Anything? Uh, unfortunately, JP, I don't think anybody really knows anything much. Uh, that's sad to say, but uh, everything I hear is that negotiations are still going on, that there are a lot of these uh, questions that you just raised that are, you know, on the table, uh, trying to be, you know, negotiated in some form or fashion. Um, you know, it sounds as though the, the agreement is to create a for-profit entity um, and leave the PGA Tour the way it is now as a 501c6, which is a not-for-profit entity. So in essence, hopefully, that means that the Tour would stay with its tournaments the way it is and that the charities in every town that the Tour visits would still receive you know, funds and so forth and so on, that that would not change. The problem I see or potential problem is, you know, what can the tour, what assets does the tour have that it could put into this for-profit entity? Um, The media rights, maybe, I guess. I I don't know. You know, the sponsorship, you know, you have the official paint of the PGA Tour. You have the official copier of the PGA Tour. You have the official this and that of the PGA Tour. Uh, Those companies put money in, you know, is that going to go into this for-profit entity? 
I really don't know. And, um, I, you know, from talking to a few of the players that I still keep in touch with, I don't feel like they know. You know, they're still uh, very much uh, asking questions and not getting answers. So, um, you know, I thought it was good that Monahan actually faced the press this week uh, for the first time since he's back from his uh, leave of absence with uh, his medical issues. Um, but again, there weren't a lot of answers. No, you know, he, well, we hope to have an agreement in place by the end of the year. We continue to negotiate, you know, various aspects. So, uh, I don't, I don't think anybody really knows a whole lot more than that. If they do, it's a handful of people and they're not telling anybody else. How do you think it affects what we're worried about is our own tournament, right? Valspar. You've been so, uh, uh involved in that as well and, and volunteered countless hours there. What if these, you know, I, I would put them in the second, you know, you have your first tier majors, second tier, you know, big events. I think they're on the cusp of that, right? Where, where, where what happens? I would, I, I would as well, JP. Um, you know, the, the players love the golf course. They yeah. love the Copperhead course. They love the setting there, being able to bring their families and yes. just stay right there on property. Um, I do say that in looking at the new schedule, you know, for next year that came out just the other day, it looks beneficial to the Valspar Championship in that the, you know, I don't even know what they're calling them now. They were designated events this year. I think they've got some other signature events, I think is what they're calling them next year, that they're, they're spaced better to where, you know, last year it became very evident that, you know, you had Tigers event on the West Coast, then you had the Honda, which the field was terrible. Then you had the Arnold Palmer Invitational in Bay Hill, which was a designated event, so a great field. Then you had the Players, which was a great field. Right. Then you had Valspar, and then you had the match play, the WGC match play, so another great field. So, you know, the spacing of those events was not very good as far as Valspar Championship was concerned. But next year's schedule is a little different. So I think uh, it could very well help the Valspar event to attract a better field than it had last year. Not that the field was bad, but there were some name players, stars, that uh, had played in the past that elected to skip last year. All right, I'll get you out on this. Who's the best player in the game right now, and who are the guys we should be watching in the next coming years? Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I think the best players right now, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you look at one, two, and three in the world rankings, uh, you've got John Rahm, you've got Scotty Scheffler, and you've got Rory McIlroy. Yeah. I think that's pretty accurate. I mean, those, those guys have all played extremely well this year. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, if he'd have putted a lick, uh, I mean, if he'd have putted like you, JP, he would be, he would, he would be so far ahead of everybody because he is hitting the ball beautifully. I mean, uh, the stats he has of his ball striking are, you know, uh, almost historical, uh, how well he struck the ball. He just has not putted uh, anywhere near what he's capable of. So I would say those three guys are probably your, your top three right now. And, and rightfully so. Yeah. Um, young guys coming up, uh, watch out for this Ludwig Aberg, who played at Texas A&M, uh, really a good young player. I think you're going to see a lot of good things out of him. You know, he got through and out onto the tour through the PGA Tour University program, where they take the top five guys oh, yeah. from college golf and give them some access. Well, uh, I think he's played eight tournaments. He's made the cut eight times. Uh, that's pretty impressive for a, a 21, 22 year old mm -hmm. kid coming out of college to, uh, to, to step in and play with the best players in the world and make the cut every time he plays. That is really good stuff. So, um, you know, who's having a great year? is our local guy, Jackson, Jackson Suber. Suber. I just wrote He's had a down. tremendous <laughs> year on the Corn Ferry Tour. He's yeah. going to be out on the PGA Tour next year. So, awesome. um, you know, he's shooting some great scores, a lot of low numbers, you know, 65s and 6s and 7s, uh, which is what it takes out on the Corn Ferry Tour. And, you know, if he can bring that game out with him on the PGA Tour next year, I think he's going to do really well. That's a great place to leave it, uh, the future of golf in Tampa Bay and, and a man that has punctuated his career with – the most prestigious uh, award in golf, the Payne Stewart Award. Gary, I'm, I'm so pleased for you. I feel the same way I felt about Rondé and Canton uh, this past weekend, and it, uh, it's just a joy to call you both friends, and I, I really appreciate uh, all you've done for me and how gracious you've been with your time on our show. Can't thank you enough, and again, congratulations. Well, JP, thank you very much. As I've uh, said uh, to you and to many others, humbled, honored, and uh, – can't think of a better way to kind of wrap up a career. So uh, heading off into retirement, going to be playing some golf for fun and doing some traveling. That so, sounds uh, good to me, uh, partner. 
Absolutely. Get somewhere where it's a little bit cooler. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would do, I would do that right away. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. Great stuff. The great All right. Coke. Thanks, JP. Talk uh, to you soon. Yep. Bye. Uh, this is a, this is a wonderful man on so many levels. And, uh, man, when I heard that, that he had gotten the award, I, I was just uh, so pleased, so pleased um, that uh, – and that, that list, his name belongs on that list of, of uh, the greats that have done the game. But if you look at that list, you know, he, he I think he would be considered, and I hate to say this, but the least accomplished player, which means you're a hell of a dude. <laughs> right, right. That, that story about like most of these guys have won majors. Right, right. You know, or, or, or much better players career wise anyway. So for to him to be part of that just shows you how well respected he is in the game of golf. And I love the story about the Arnold Palmer Isn't story. That awesome? That's a hell of a to play with. Isn't that awesome. Sixteen year old playing with Arnold Palmer, and who was the other one he said that was playing with him? Eddie Pierce. Eddie Pierce. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, at who, sixteen years old, and yeah. then for Arnold Palmer to remember that and Gary fifteen years. Yeah, yeah, Gary Player. That's Gary, what I was Gary thinking Player, of, yeah. and to remember that fifteen years later when you're winning his tournament. Yeah. That's storybook. You know, and, and it's, there's so many great stories about Arnold, but his recall, um, having met people, and something else that Arnold would do that uh, I, I wish I would have done in my career, and I, I did not. Um, it, Arnold would write handwritten notes to everybody. I mean, you know, and I hate to put it in this word, but the most casual of, of, of acquaintances that he would have, if it meant something to him, he would do a handwritten note, and I'm sure Gary has more than one of them. Um, and, pe- and the people in the golf world just treasure those handwritten notes. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great uh, quality to have. If you're a young person and you can somehow get in the, in the uh, you know, go buy yourself a box of thank you notes or whatever, handwritten notes mean so much to so many people. And they remember it, especially in this day and age of texts and emails. Um, I don't even know how, how you get people's addresses. There. You can actually just get them online now. But um, Arnold, Arnold used to do that. So it's. It's a uh, you know a great a great for for Ronde to go into Canton and and honestly this is really a kind of a Hall of Fame moment. This list of players is more of a, a better representation of a Hall of Fame I think for golf than the actual Hall of Fame. So again, congratulations to to Gary Coat. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and we're going to get into the Rays' dismal performance last night and unfortunately um, you know maybe portending of things to come. Uh, for this raised team. So we'll take a quick break. We're brought to you by the great folks at Extravaganza Productions. If you've got an event coming up, whether it's a party, you got a big birthday party coming up, you want to do something special, well, call the folks at Extravaganza Productions. They'll give you a free creative session, audio, visual, props. They can do anything over there. So it's free to have a consultation with them. They can tell you what they can do, get the pricing, and check it out. It's better than doing it yourself. Trust me on this. Uh, and they do big events, small events. They'd love to chat with you. Just tell them you heard it on the JP Show, and they'll give you a free creative consultation. Just go over there and see the big warehouse they have there. It's pretty cool. ExtravaganzaProductions.com. Back in three. Stay with us. Do you have any old coins sitting around the house? Well, the Golden Diamond Source will purchase a variety of different types of coins and bullion. Their gold buying program includes sterling silver, silver, platinum, and watches. They also accept unusual pieces that other jewelry stores do not, such as gold bars and sterling silver flatware. The list of items they do accept is far more extensive than those they don't, so check it out. While you're there, you can check out the largest collection of any family-owned jewelry store in the country, especially with summer coming to an end, the holidays Right around the corner, never too early to start your holiday shopping, especially if you're planning on getting engaged or have any birthdays or anniversaries coming up. Come on in and find out what buying jewelry should be like with an expert staff of gold and diamond jewelry enthusiasts. And the best part, they treat you like family. And if you're worrying about price, don't. The Gold and Diamond Source has something for everyone's budget. They even have a layaway. If you stop in and get your favorite piece now, you can have it paid off by Christmas. Plus, you can even finance your purchase with 0% interest for up to five years, and you can get a $5,000 diamond for only $83 a month. It's the greatest folks in the world. Julie and Steve Weintraub, the Golden Diamond Source, 3800 Olmerton Road, always online at thegoldendiamondsource.com. JP here for my good friends at Italiano Insurance, and they did it again, once again, 
Italiano Insurance stepping up with the best customer service. I was in a bind. My old insurance company, my auto insurance, jacked up my rate, so I called Charity at Italiano Insurance, and she stayed till 9.30 at night until she got my insurance done, and guess what? She searched all these companies for me. I didn't do the work she did. Saved me $1,000 on my annual premium. $1,000, folks. That's real, real money, and that's what you get at Italiano Insurance. Great customer service. And here's another note for you, by the way, with hurricane season up. 40% of people in Florida are underinsured. That means if you have something happen during a hurricane and you need replacement costs, you're going to get 40% less than you deserve. Can't let that happen. Call the folks at Italiano Insurance and get them uh, to help you out in both those regards. It will save you money and keep you insured properly. That's 813-877-7799. Great folks in the community. Been doing it for over 60 years. Italiano Insurance. 813-877-7799. All right, this is for all you guys who don't want to go to the gym and do 5,000 crunches. At Bay Area Modern Medical Center, you can get on the new True Body Machine where you can reduce fat and tone up your muscle. It's like doing 54,000 crunches in just 15 minutes. Define your body as you see fit. True Body offers personalized muscle stimulation that delivers the equivalent of those 54,000 crunches in just 15 minutes. Just get in touch with them at Bay Area Modern Medical Center, BAMMC.com. Chris Lugo and the team over there will set you up on True Body and get amazing results. Non invasive with comfortable and little to no pain and zero downtime. You can isolate and target those areas that you want to improve and treat multiple areas simultaneously. It's an amazing machine, so check it out at Bay Area Modern Medical Center, B-A-M-M-C dot com. Well, Fitz the Mortgage Guy did it again. A listener heard his ad was going to another big bank, but called Scott Fitzgerald at American Mortgage Services of Tampa, and Fitz saved him $618 on his monthly payment. Are you kidding me? Folks, that's big money. Rates are going up, they're going down, they're going all over the place. Scott will shop your loan and save you lender fees and get the best rates. Email him, scott at amstampa.com, or call 813-294-7595. That's Fitz the Mortgage Guy. Lots of stuff going on right now, and these rates are going all over the place. You need somebody knowledgeable in the market that will work hard for you and get you the best deal. That's my man, Scott. He's done three loans for me, done thousands of loans for Local folks here, works with a lot of the coaches and players in the area. He's the guy. 813-294-7595 or go to scott at amstampa.com. During COVID, over 1.7 million people were added to the Florida Medicaid rolls, but as of April 1st, 2023, most of these people may not be eligible for the Medicaid coverage and will lose their health plan. If you have been notified you are losing your coverage, don't freak out. It's very likely you can apply for a federal subsidy under the Affordable Care Act. Just call 877-652-0244. Our representatives will walk you through the whole process, get some basic information on your income, number of kids, and then they'll find a plan that best fits your needs. In fact, with the new laws, 90% of Americans qualify for reduced or free health care. You can select great plans like Florida Blue, that's my carrier, love them, paying $800 left after making the call. 877-652-0244. Our highly trained professionals know all the intricacies of the new laws. They will do all the work. You save tons of money. So if you're being dropped from Medicaid, fear not. Call 877-652-0244. Get real health insurance, free doctor visits, free blood work, no deductibles. 877-652-0244. Let's go. Right now. Back to the show with JP on, on Fan Stream Sports. Ah, oh, what a wonderful uh, interview that was with Gary Coke. That was really fun. Um, just as we said, the best in the business. And I miss I miss watching golf. I haven't watched golf in a while. I, know, I watched a little of the FedEx Cup yesterday, so I'm going to watch as the playoffs go through. It'll be fun to watch. Getting the Ryder Cup, I'm jacked up about that. That'll be fun. I felt like maybe it's just me, but this year's like events felt a little flat to me maybe because gary's voice wasn't on him it just the broadcast just seemed different it's i like, don't need, yeah i, I mean like who's i would be like whose voice is that like i don't even know who the new people are to be honest and it's not just at nbc and golf channel it's cbs and all well as long as jim, is, is jim nance is there i mean yeah we have we have hope i guess i miss faldo uh, i do Singer. miss i do miss nick faldo yeah. a lot yeah 
Love Zoom. It was so great to well, have him back the, on the Open. The way the ESPN, they get a lot of heat for the way they do the Masters broadcast, and rightfully so. Right. Where, like, the best way to watch the Masters is literally on your laptop by going to masters.org. That should not be the way. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And a lot of, you know, uh, to be fair, a lot of that's on, you know, the Masters. Like, they, I remember them doing, like, the Masters coverage, and it was, like, the, the first day, the Thursday. And I wanted, I was so excited. I got home, and I turned it to, to ESPN, and I love Marty Smith. Don't get me wrong. But I didn't really have interest in listening to Marty Smith interviewing um, Jake Owen with the golf and, like, a little screen on the right side. No, this is exactly what I I'm talking about. I think we just want to watch the golf. And, you know, and I love Marty Smith to death, but Marty Smith should not be doing the Masters. Well, I think he, was, I think he had stepped in for Scott Van Pelt. They had kind of rotated, I think. Scott Van Pelt should be doing the Masters. <laughs> the whole entire time. Yes. I thought Scott Marty Van was Pelt good. worked at the Golf Channel. Scott Van Pelt is a golf voice. I love Marty Smith. I love ev- almost everything he does. When I saw him on the Masters, I was like, what are we doing? I just didn't need a Jake Owen interview during it. That was yeah. my just that was just my personal thing. With golf literally in a little box next to them. There should be a hair gel ratio. Like if you've got more hair gel <laughs> than hair or some type of ratio nah, in he's, there. He's got a hell of a head. He does. Yeah, he does it. But that you just, you know, I prefer bald people <laughs> doing the masters. <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> That's the most worthless take ever. <laughs> but yes. It just there needs to be a level of dignity, you know. I got I, when, I, when I see a guy doing the the slippery stairs he did the other day, whatever the, the stairs of slippery stairs of death, where he and his partner is putting suds all over the stairs and he has to try to climb them up. I like I, that. Yeah, I, I love like a that. little levity sometimes. I love that. That that's Marty Smith and and his, what's his other partner's name? Marty Ryan McGee. And, yeah, right? Ryan, I like I, I love them when they're doing that. That guy shouldn't be doing the masters. <laughs> That's not. That's not. Yeah, his they, they also competed in the uh, the cornhole tournament on ESPN. Exactly. Last year too. Exactly. My point. <laughs> what What doesn't belong here? All right. I love you, Marty. I think you're fantastic at everything you do. Stay off my masters. <laughs> you really sound like the old head now. <laughs> I, I, you really I, I, do. I, Only bald I, people on my masters <laughs> broadcast. <laughs> well, you want people to look like you. I guess is what you want. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not bald yet, although there have been suggestions. <laughs> you might as well just take it off. Whatever. Um, I got. I think I have too many scars on my head to do that, to be honest with you. There's too many golf clubs to the head. You know, and you're liable, like, and you're liable like a couple months ago when you bumped your head over there. Oh, my you're God. You're liable to have a bleeding fest or something if you Jesus, went bald. I almost killed myself. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> Speaking of something that's bleeding right now. <laughs> you know, the so the race lose last night. Um Five two to the Cardinals lose the series to that. We call it five team. nothing. I really don't. It care was about five last nothing. It really was. The last two runs were meaningless. They get shut out by Matthew Libertor, their former first round pick, who was uh, one in four with a six <laughs> nine three coming in. I'll do you better. How about eleven forty eight ERA on the road? Oof. Opponents hitting three fifty against them. And the other stat you mentioned off air: the swings and misses. Fifteen swings and misses last night. He had fifteen swings and misses. His first, his four starts combined going into <laughs> last night. <laughs> Come on, man. And the, you know, this is what the Rays have been doing wrong. That they were doing so right in the beginning of the year. They've expanded the zone. They're not being patient. They're hitting. You know, they're swinging at bad pitches. It's like, like it, they just overnight everybody started to hit home. Wanted to hit home runs, and that's all they wanted to do. It's a disease. When you start, when guys, especially the guys that have not typically been home run hitters, start hitting home runs, they get they get the disease. And some of and those guys have them. started to they don't hit home runs. There's there nobody's hitting home runs anymore. Like somebody yeah, like Harold Ramirez, sw- is, Harold Ramirez pitches. is not hitting home runs anymore. Uh, Josh Lowe, his are few and far in between. Christian Bethencourt, few and far between. Yeah. Right. So it, yes, it's definitely happened. And I see a lot of guys with great pitch counts against the Rays. All of a sudden, it seems yeah. like every night, guys not being patient. And this is also astounding. Remember how the Rays, we talked about how great they are at home. <clears throat> and they're still the number one home team in the league, if you can believe it, with this number right here. They have not won a home series since June 9th to the 11th. Jesus. We are in, it's August 11th. They have gone two months without winning a single home series. Wow. Two months. It's not even worth your $10 ticket. Oh, no kidding. No. <laughs> two months. It, this is, you know, and I hate to tell you that you were wrong well i'm not wrong yet i'll we, be i'll be wrong and when we find out the end of september october 
we then just I'll be wrong. need we needed a bat. Probably two, to be honest with you. We needed a bat, and we didn't get one in the off season. Promised we'd get one at the deadline. Didn't do it there. Didn't spend any money whatsoever. All this promise that we're going to spend, we're going to spend. You didn't spend shit. And and it's this is the team that you get. Meaningful games in September. Um, with Stu's mantra. And it's all you're ever going to get as long as this ownership group is here. I hate to tell you. But well, I hopefully, will, not, for, I mean, hopefully not for long. I hopefully just will not say, for long. I just will say, and I did say it, you know, this week when McClanahan, you know, we're assuming the Tommy John and all that, fearing the worst, it does feel like the specialness of this season yes. has started to wane. It's gone. And it's like I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to remain optimistic. And I feel like I have done that for through this hard stretch as good as I can. But – Given just, I mean, you have to read all the little signs that are going on right now, and you look at all the other teams. It's hard to find a path for this team to win a World Series. It just is. Yeah. It just is. Yeah. I mean, if they had the pitch, and, and injuries are a big part of it. And you know, injuries I, are a big I part of it. I don't want to throw all of it on, you know, just the, the predictable not spending of money, but that's part of it because if you don't spend money, you don't have depth. You know, a lot of these players that play should be depth players, and they're not because we don't have – the front line guys that are big time major leaguers, and that's sad. Well, and with a, and with a new stadium, I just have to say this real quick because I did this for another podcast last night, and I'll do it again because we haven't talked about it in a while. One of the reasons we I think we haven't heard a lot about the stadium um, is because um, I have heard from good sources that these talks for the purchase of the team have started to gain more steam. Uh, Stu is in is now become more in a sell mode. We, I've heard, so it would not be surprise me if a sale before the stadium deal gets done. I think Major League Baseball does not want this deal to get done, Stu to do the deal, and then him sell the franchise. I think they've come to grips with that. Major League Baseball, as always, wants the team in Tampa because that's where the long-term growth is, that's where the long-term money is, and long-term money – and bigger uh, prospects of money mean for these other owners that they don't have to give the Rays revenue sharing anymore, and that's one of their main pro- that's one of their main objectives here in getting this new stadium done. And I think they've come to the realization that Stu may be in it for the short term gain in Pinellas and get more money up front, but that still leaves Major League Baseball with a failed location, which is what they're dealing with in Miami. And they don't want to make the same mistake that they made in Miami by allowing the Marlins to build in a failed location, in a bad location. They did that, and now they still have attendance problems, even though they built a beautiful ballpark that should have been located in the middle of the market in Fort Lauderdale, not in the bottom of the market in Miami, in an area where people don't go to the baseball games because they can't afford it. Um, Just bad idea, bad planning. They don't want to repeat that mistake in Tampa. Major League Baseball knows that, and I think they're probably going to maybe, uh, I want to say force a sale, but encourage a sale to local owners, and that deal is, from what I've been told, is picking up more steam. And these local owners will want to build long-term in Tampa. So that's just, and I think that's good for baseball. It's tremendous for the local area. Um, It's tremendous for the Rays long-term because they'll be able to compete more and with a salary cap that looks more like what the Braves are doing than, you know, what the uh, Oakland A's are doing. So that being said, on the field last night, I have issues with Franco getting picked off, second second right. base. I have issues with the way Siri played that ball with Arenado running in the sixth, scoring from first, um, and, and, and mostly because he didn't get a ju- – he should have seen Arenado running and should have got a better jump on the ball and been more proactive. And he he was he was lollygagging. He yeah, was lollygagging. under under no circumstance. This is not just for because I can't figure out a name right now. I'll just go with Jose Siri. This is not a, a player like Jose Siri running from first on that play, where I expect that guy to score. This is Nolan Arenado. He's not the fastest guy in the world. There was under no circumstance should Nolan Arenado have scored from first all the way to home on that play. Yep. And listen, as much as I love Jose Siri with the team leading and home runs and at the bottom of the order, I think that's a valuable asset. Hyped him up yesterday and everything. There are moments in his game where it seems like he's caught sleeping a little bit in the outfield. He's a little nonchalant out there, too, with the way he kind of catches the ball. I know Brian Anderson really can't stand it on the broadcast. <laughs> you hear him all the time because he waits to the last possible second 
to, to put the glove up. And I get it. That's the flair of his game, and I don't want to take that away because you want these guys to be themselves. But when it doesn't work out, it really does not look good. And last night was another moment where it did not look good. And it, it's not an isolated incident. I've seen this multiple times from Jose Siri. And in general with this team, I've seen multiple you know, mental lapses throughout the game. And how many times has Wander Franco gotten picked off of the base path recently? Way too many. It's happening way too much. And I'm not going to bang on him too much because he made up with it. He made it an, an unbelievable play at shortstop the next inning, redeemed himself. And listen, he's the only guy right now right with Yandi who's hitting consistently. Yeah. So give him credit there. But it's just those things, the, the tightening of the screws right now with the Rays that are just not there. Well, playing with an edge and playing the Rays way has always been their winning edge. And that means not making stupid mental mistakes, hustling where other teams don't. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me we saw that from the Orioles this year. We're seeing it from the Cardinals yesterday that other teams are more dialed in and more focused than it, the Rays are, it's just, and that's unlike the Rays. It's just deflating because you came off, we opened up this week that they had an excellent road trip where yeah. they won all three series. It's so, like, you felt like you had some momentum and we were turning a corner, and you got St. Louis coming in who sold off assets and was just dead in the water this season. Mm -hmm. They got no, they have one of the worst pitching staffs in the league. And then to just get diced up by Matthew Liberatore, in seven innings like that. Made that guy look like a Cy Young. Swinging at a lot that, of bad pitches. Swinging at a lot of bad pitches, just not working counts, doing all those things they did at the beginning of the year. That's what's frustrating is it feels like they took a little bit of a step <laughs> back this week, and, you know, now you got to regroup and, and go to Cleveland, but I feel like they've lost their momentum going into this series Two now. hits and eight innings off that game. Two innings. Who, who wanted to watch that? Two hits and eight innings. Who, who enjoyed watching that Liberty. last night? One That's of the hardest awful. games I've had, to, I've, I've had to get through this year. Yeah, Zach Littell was good last night. Right. Six inning pitch, just gave up just three runs. Gave for, him a chance. For uh, yeah, gave him a chance. That's and all he you could can ask and, for. and listen, seventy how many pitches? Seventy three pitches. Yeah. Six innings for Zach Littell. Fantastic find. That pitching matchup with Zach Littell actually favored the Rays, and it they did. still went out and and lost the game they shouldn't have lost. And now three games behind the O's, who have a tougher schedule coming up. But you know we right. keep saying that. And but part of the tougher schedule is or the easier schedule, is beating the Cardinals yeah, the, in a series at home. Exactly. The sense of urgency has got yes. to be there for the Rays right now because as things stand, you are playing the Houston Astros in the wild card. No shot. Who and, wants that? And who are you facing? Who wants that? And you're going to get Verlander, Verlander from Robert. Valdez, and Christian Javier. <laughs> I hate to be the – my optimism kind of shrinks a little bit there. Could we have a worse offensive output than last year against Cleveland? One run in 24 innings. Could we be against Gooby? those guys? <laughs> I mean, at least you get the series at home, I guess. But at, at least that thing stand right now. You get it at home at least. So instead of being on the road in, in Houston, which is no easy place to play. No, but we, we, they definitely play better at home, as we know. Bang those trash. Not recently. Yeah. The yeah. Rays, at least. Yeah, well, the Yeah. Isn't it funny? <laughs> Do you ever just think a little bit about what those guys at WFAN said? No, I don't. I, I really don't. Because we're really much worse than we were, and and at home as well. <laughs> nah, we no, weren't no, cheating. No. no, we weren't cheating. Nah, no. we wouldn't do that. No, cash, don't even don't even bring cash that up. Wouldn't, cash wouldn't. Cash wouldn't. Too much integrity that. on this team. No yeah, way. Cash wouldn't. We're not. Up with that. No. no way. No. No. No freaking way. Um, I hate to read some of these, uh, but. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, hey, Nick, in case it wasn't obvious before because you got mad last week. This team is going nowhere, bounced in the first round like always. This team can't hit still. Would have been nice to get a blast. Bopper. Just going to sit here quietly, and I'm going to stir my coffee up. James says race six that. innings from Mattel, who gave them a chance, but as JP said, 1,000% agree. Rays, as usual, went cheap and didn't get a popper. Hey, at least, James, you got my quote right. At least you, you were right there. About I know. What you, I and, said. you and James are having a, a good moment now. right there. Yeah. You're, you're basically well, as buds. long as he represents what I say <laughs> accurately, we can get along. <laughs> we'll be good. Um, Bucks Baseball says Luke Kedick, he's probably my, my tap one because he was the worst offensive lineman in football. That entire right set of line is a problem. I agree. I agree. I, mean, I don't know who Cody Malk is, I have no idea. The, the Bucks really seem to like him, but they really seem to like Luke Gedeke at left guard last year, too. And that didn't work that out true. so well. That is true. That and, didn't work and out the, and so the, well. And the major players that were in that decision, Todd Bowles, 
It's the same offensive line coach, Jason Joel Gobert, yeah. Jason Light. You're yeah. still here, so. Yeah. I don't know. I just – Jason, like, loves those small school old linemen. He really does. And oh, What was he? <laughs> A small school offensive lineman. Right. <laughs> really loves those small school guys. Well, he's hit on them, too. Alex yeah, Kappa. He has. He has. Uh, and so, Ali Marpet. Boom, boom. He has. And, and who's Huge. to say Luke Eddick, he won't become a great or a good left or right tackle? We don't know yet. We really don't know. We don't know It's yet. almost unfair. And I'm even. not saying he won't become one. I'm just saying at this point right now. It's he, a concern. It's a concern. You know, and I know what they're doing. They want these guys to get experience because you're not going to get better sitting on the bench. That's for damn sure. Listen, as long as the guy's not, you know, Caleb Beninock out there, I mean, I think we're, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're okay. Ouch, Ben. <laughs> My friend Randy Harris has him on his show all the time now. Oh, really? He's a really smart guy and a good analyst. Well, you know, I can only judge what I saw on the field. He wasn't that great. Sorry. I think if he's a big and honest analyst, (laughs) he would say he was not great. (laughs) No, it was not great at all, actually. He wouldn't be honest. He always got Jameis killed a few times. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, all right, so the Rays go on the road. Uh, Savali will head back to Cleveland. Well, no, no, they're at home. home. That's right. They're they're, they're at home. They're at home before they get a fun one with San Francisco. on the road, then. I tried, man, tried to go to Jacobs Field that Friday night. I was in Cleveland, but they had a fireworks promotion, and, like, they were sold out. Tickets were, like, 60, 70 bucks for outfield tickets. I'm like, I'm not doing that. In Cleveland? Cleveland, yeah. What the hell are they charging? They're going nowhere, too. Yeah, I think it was for the promotion, because you could get, like, $15 tickets on the sub for the Sunday game, but we were leaving. So. But yeah, this is another, but anyway, this is another team, though, in Cleveland that sold off assets, mm-hmm. even though they're only three and a half back of the division. Right. They sold off assets. Right. 56 and 60. They've lost uh, seven of their last 10. If the Rays can't win this series, man, we've got issues. Mm-hmm. We have got issues if they cannot put – if you lose back-to-back series against the Cardinals and Guardians, the sense of urgency – because then you got to go out west and play the Giants. And the Angels. Yeah, and the Giants are no slouch. I'm here to tell you that right now. The Giants are playing some really good baseball lately. Mm-hmm. So – Again, the sense of urgency has got to pick up because I don't want to have to play the Astros in a wild card. That's the way I have to look at it right now. You've got to win the division as far as I'm concerned. At this point, I think it's more likely that they miss the playoffs than win the division. Well, they're I'm still – I said it. They're still – they still have a good buffer. They'd have to really collapse down what, the line. What, they're four and a half up for the – they're Last four one. up in the wild card. And Toronto, by the way, so if the Rays were able to get into the division, they would play Toronto instead. And Seattle's a game and a half back, and that's pretty much it. It's going to be Seattle or Toronto probably in that last spot. So you would either get them or you have to face Houston. You, you want to win the division. You want to win the division. End of story. Division. And I'm yeah. sorry to break it to you, but given the start that you had, and again, I've given credit to the Orioles for never letting the Rays get a huge lead on you, it's a big disappointment if you don't win the division this year. Hell yes. It just is. Yeah, but they've got. But like to your point, every game is crucial. You can't be. Yeah, we're not. We're not every, out there I, I kept, losing a series to the Yeah, Cardinals. I kept hearing this from so many Rays fans in June and July when they were struggling. Well, none of these games are that important right now, and just wait till we get to September. No, no, no. We're 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 here now. We are here. The games matter. And we're past no, the trade and, deadline. And you got no shame, McClanahan. And you got no shame, McClanahan. And obviously, that's not the Rays' fault. But the sense of urgency's got to pick up. Yeah. All right, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get into a little bit more of the NFL slate. A couple of games last night that were interesting that we learned some stuff about C.J. Stroud and the Texans. Seahawks uh, and Vikings played last night. The Vikings, obviously, we will see in the uh, opener on the road up there. So, quick break. We're brought to you by the great folks at the Gold and Diamond Source. Hey, if you got any uh, sterling silver flatware laying around, any bullion, old coins, silver, or gold, take them into the Gold and Diamond Source, and they will pay you cold, hard cash. So a uh, good way to pick up some extra money for some stuff you just got laying around the house. And, of course, if you're looking for that engagement ring this summer, you can uh, do it on layaway or, or finance it, 0% financing. For 80-some bucks, you can get a huge, huge ring for 80 bucks a month. So don't be saying you don't have any money, you can't afford it. Yes, you can. 0% interest at the Gold and Diamond Source. Of course, you get the 100% um, buyback of your diamond at any time. Stay with us. Well, Fitz the Mortgage Guy did it again. A listener heard his ad was going to another big bank, but called Scott Fitzgerald at American Mortgage Services of Tampa, and Fitz saved him $618 on his monthly payment. Are you kidding me? Folks, that's big money. 
Rates are going up, they're going down, they're going all over the place. Scott will shop your loan and save you lender fees and get the best rates. Email him, scott at amstampa.com, or call 813-294-7595. That's Fitz, the mortgage guy. Lots of stuff going on right now, and these rates are going all over the place. You need somebody knowledgeable in the market that will work hard for you and get you the best deal. That's my man, Scott. He's done three loans for me, done thousands of loans for local folks here, works with a lot of the coaches and players in the area. He's the guy. 813-294-7595 or go to scott at amstampa.com. JP here for my good friends at Italiano Insurance, and they did it again, once again, Italiano Insurance stepping up with the best customer service. I was in a bind. My old insurance company, my auto insurance, jacked up my rates, so I called Charity at Italiano Insurance, and she stayed till 9.30 at night until she got my insurance done, and guess what? She searched all these companies for me. I didn't do the work she did. Saved me $1,000 on my annual premium. $1,000, folks, that's real, real money, and that's what you get at Italiano Insurance. Great customer service. And here's another note for you, by the way, with hurricane season up, 40% of people in Florida are underinsured. That means if you have something happen during a hurricane and you need replacement costs, you're going to get 40% less than you deserve. Can't let that happen. Call the folks at Italiano Insurance and get them uh, to help you out in both those regards. It will save you money and keep you insured properly. That's 813-877-7799. Great folks in the community. Been doing it for over 60 years. Italiano Insurance. 813-877-7799. During COVID, over 1.7 million people were added to the Florida Medicaid rolls. But as of April 1st, 2023, most of these people may not be eligible for the Medicaid coverage and will lose their health plan. If you have been notified you are losing your coverage, don't freak out. It's very likely you can apply for a federal subsidy under the Affordable Care Act. Just call 877-652-0244. Our representatives will walk you through the whole process, get some basic information on your income, number of kids, and then they'll find a plan that best fits your needs. In fact, with the new laws, 90% of Americans qualify for reduced or free health care. You can select great plans like Florida Blue. That's my carrier. Love them paying $800 left after making the call. 877-652-0244. Our highly trained professionals know all the intricacies of the new laws. They will do all the work. You save tons of money. So if you're being dropped from Medicaid, fear not. Call 877-652-0244. Get real health insurance, free doctor visits, free blood work, no deductibles. 877-652-0244. Hey, JP here for Extravaganza Productions Incorporated, EPI. You've probably seen their purple logo at so many events that you've gone to. They are based in Tampa, and for over 33 years, they've been creating and producing conferences, meetings, and special events, the biggest to the smallest, solid reputation of delivering the best audiovisual, sound, lighting, entertainment, video production, and decor on time and on budget. I've worked with them with so many big events, the Warrior Games, which was an Olympic-style event all over uh, Tampa Bay from McDill to the Convention Center to USF. They did it flawlessly, made it look big and fantastic. I've worked with them on small events as well, uh, large and small meetings and conferences, sporting events, fundraisers. If you got a fundraiser, you don't know the logistical way to pull it off, they'll take care of everything. Entertainment events, branding events, grand openings, so much more. The folks at Extravaganza Productions are the most professional and the best. I've worked with them many times. They are fantastic. You can contact them through extravaganzaproductions.com or call 813-621-4700. Extravaganza Productions, they are awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, let's rock. This is FanStream Sports with JP. Early in his Patriots tenure. Now Stroud hanging in. Throws it to the near side. Picked there you go. And on the return for the Pats, sidestepping ahead is Mills. He takes it back across the middle, trying to turn the corner on the far side. Uh, it's still on his feet Take, until he takes the spill at the 24. Well, not a great debut for C.J. Stroud last night with the Houston Texans, but uh, to be expected. And boy, did the Patriots come after him last night. They were fast and furious. And it's just like, you can just see Bill Belichick saying, okay, rookie, uh, you ready for this? I was going to say, uh, what is uh, yeah. 
preseason, regular season, exhibition, doesn't matter. What does Bill Belichick do to rookie quarterbacks? Just eats them alive. He really does. He eats them alive. And he put a smile on his face, the grin. He just stands there like this on the sideline. See, it's different. When Todd Bowles stands on the sideline like this, we all, we, we all are like, why aren't you doing something? But when Bill just stands there like this with that little grin on his face, it's like – What's the? It's like Lord the Palpatine in Star Wars or something. <laughs> like, nice, nice reference. I there. was trying to Very find nice it too. Man. I was like, "What the hell is that guy's name?" Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it was. You know, it was predictable, is what it was. You know, and and this is once again, we have to temper our enthusiasm about Kyle Trask and, and Baker Mayfield. Even Kyle Trask is a he's never really played in a meaningful NFL snap, and this is what happens to guys. It's on the job training. Not to say that, you know, he shouldn't get the job, but um, this is why Baker is going to be the starter in Minnesota. Uh, according to Ira Kaufman, and he was in Canton, as was I. He was at the same parties I was at, spoke to the same people that I spoke to. And I absolutely concur with him that Baker will be the starter. In, but that does not mean that Baker's going to be the starter the entire season, which is the reason for the exercise of this quarterback competition. They want to see if Kyle Trask can handle it in this league, and I would be absolutely shocked if Kyle does not start a, a couple games this year at some point. So, um, again, don't think that the competition is over because it's not. They're just deciding that the best chance for them to win a football game and develop this team is for the guy that's got 68 games of NFL experience under his belt, Baker Mayfield, to make his first start on the road in one of the loudest buildings in the NFL. I mean, it's just it would be stupid to start Kyle Trask there. It really would. It would be malfeasance on Todd Bowles' part. So even for Bowles, all of you Trask Bowles fans. Was probably not going to take that risk. No. Why, why should he? Really, he? he really can't afford to. Why should he? And this is and this watching C.J. Stroud last night is a perfect reason why. Well, by the way, did you see Drew Locke? Yeah, he got a good night. Drew Locke can throw the damn football. Yeah. He can throw. I don't the think damn we question the talent there. Yeah, but he made some really big time throws last night. I was like, Tick. yeah, Look I mean, this guy. it's preseason football. That's why, like, I'm not I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, you see it, Stroud's a bust. Like, you know how some people are going to overreact over right. you know one series or whatever it oh, was. God no. But it's just it's just a let it's just a reminder that. To, everybody needs to breathe a little bit when it comes to quarterbacks around the league. We mm -hmm. all need to breathe. Not everybody comes into the league like Justin Herbert and ha just gets it right away. Not everybody's Dan Marino and in year two they're going to Super Bowls. It just doesn't happen that way for everybody, right? And I think like often – and C.J. Stroud, is, was he a perfect prospect? No. Mm -mm. It's a flawed prospect. Just like every prospect in this draft is a flawed prospect. Mm -hmm. There are going to be hills and valleys throughout all these guys' rookie seasons, whether it's Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, or Anthony Richardson. It's going to happen. I mean, Will Levis, he's not even, like, number two on their depth chart. He's behind Malik Willis, I think. What's that say? It just it takes time. And C.J. Stroud, somebody who played at Ohio State, who had clean pockets and great offensive lines, now you're in Houston. Wide receivers that were infinitely better than the guys that were covering them. Right. Now you're in Houston. It's typically not a good, not a great offensive line. It's a very young and inexperienced team. It's Bill Belichick. Probably the worst matchup he could have had for his first taste of NFL football. Yeah. But let's just breathe. Yeah, let's just fine. breathe a little bit. It's, it's fine. Be fine. It'll be, be fine. fine. Um, Keon White last night for the Patriots was a beast. A dog. Um, Nick, check it. Check when did we draft Cody Malk before Keon White? Came off the board in the second round. So I, I know we loved him. Um, I thought he was a, a kind of a first-round guy. He was a first-round talent that slipped into the second, yeah. yes. Yeah, but um, I don't know where the Patriots got him. But I kind of vaguely remember he was on the board. But um, he's going to be – he's a dog. That dude is a dog. Uh, but, hey, yo, hopefully so so is Yo uh, uh, Daya Diaby. Two picks before Cody. So, all right, we didn't fuck that up as bad as I thought. I could have jumped up and got him. Uh, he's going to be he, he's gonna be a good one. You know, you know what the standout was yesterday in that game, though? It was What's later that? in the game. Did you see when Malik Cunningham got a chance to play last night? No. And he got a chance to run around. And he had five carries, 34 yards, and a touchdown. And it looked like, I mean, Malik Cunningham has had – he's done it to Florida State before. Let's oh, be honest. Yes, We've did. seen it. Yeah. And it was funny. I saw he was trending last night. I was like, Malik Cunningham? And like there's like a there's like a picture of Bill Belichick on the sideline. He's doing his thing, and Malik's talking to the o to Bill O'Brien or something like that. And you see Belichick's just looking at him like, 
who is this guy? Yeah. Is this my quarterback of the future? Like he could see like the wheels were turning in his head. I, I can't. I could. I. I just can't see him putting that guy out there. You know, it just he, that's not his. Lamar Jackson was never going to play for the Patriots. You know, I don't see Malik Cunningham being the starting quarterback in New England. I just a guy that just runs around and makes crazy plays. He makes shit happen. He makes stuff happen. <laughs> I mean, it, but this is the way the NFL is going. Man. It's it, it is, and I feel like if you're Bill Bell, like I'm not saying Malik Cunningham should start for the Patriots. I'm just saying that if you're an older head coach like Bill Belichick and you've done it one way for your entire career and it feels like you're starting to slip a little bit, I think it would be in your best interest to maybe shake things up a little bit. And maybe he tried with Cam Newton, but Cam Newton no. was just past it. Yeah, he was way he past, was past it. it. Way past it. I it, but he's got a you know, he's got a he's a defensive coach. What what makes those coaches go more crazy than anything? Lamar Jackson. I yeah. mean guys like that make you go cuz you, you can have you can have the most Perfect defense called, and have you know two two rushers un uh, completely running free right yeah. at the guy, and the next thing you know he's out the gate running for. And 40 he's got yards. an he's got an OC now in Bill O'Brien who's very creative and has worked with quarterbacks who are very mobile, right? So I feel like there could be some unique packages, but again, it's just yeah, I'm not trying to overact preseason. I'm just saying, Malik Cunningham looked like <laughs> he looked like how remember he always got billed at Louisville as like baby Lamar. Yeah, it's what he looked like last night for the time that he was in there. Yeah. Uh, so we got a couple. We got lots of preseason games tonight. We'll be watching. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't tune into the. Uh, I know you said Drew Lock played good, but yeah. when I originally saw it was Nick Mullins versus Drew Lock. I'm gonna be honest. It didn't really have much staying power for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just I'm watching individual guys, you know. Yeah, like um, I saw like uh, you know, I saw the clip. I'm sure everybody saw it. Jordan Addison. Um, yeah. That I guess they called it incomplete. Did they overturn that? That toe tapping effort on the sideline, which was a hell of a play by him. It looked like he got him down, but I, I guess they I guess they called it incomplete. But good to see him there. Uh, but yeah, those two teams didn't seem like they had their starters in much. Well, and tonight I don't know how much the Buck starters are going to play, but I would think that they're going to play. If I were You've got to get this offensive line some work together. You really do. I mean, you don't you don't want but you don't want anybody to get injured. But honestly, uh, other than Tristan Wirfs, if any of those guys goes down, it, it's not like Ryan Jensen going down. You know, there there to me there's you know, Lick Leverett, Hainsey, um, Aaron Stinney. Yeah, we right? we forget about him. Uh, um, Walton, they like. There's a bunch of a bunch of guys there that they, I think are all kind of equal. I think they hope that Gedeke and Malk separate themselves. But I think more than anything, point being, this group, this group of five, needs to work together. They've never played together before. Yeah. So to just say, you know, oh, we don't want to get them injured. Let's have them on two, one series or and, two series. And, no. And Tristan Wirfs. You know, into the second quarter, it, in my opinion. I was going to say maybe not Tristan Wirfs. Well, not but yeah. I need to see a series or two of Tristan Wirfs playing left yeah, he's tackle. Got, he's got to get used to it. i got to see what it looks like. Yeah. Right? At least so he can get that experience. So, But, yeah, I think the offensive line, we talked a lot about this week. And, you know, I think we're both starting to – I don't know if we're seeing the writings on the wall for Ryan Jensen. I don't know if that's fair to say. It yeah. almost – I don't – I just – you can't count on him. I'm getting to that point where I just don't know if you can count him. We're this far into camp now, and he hasn't been able to participate really much in anything significant. And the comments from Bowles and Jason Light on various interviews that they've done on Sirius uh, and some other places, you know, they, they, they are not confident no. in where Ryan is right now. And if they're not confident in the fact that he's not practicing – with the ones and doing anything in team, I, I I would be shocked if he does anything with the Jets. I don't think he's going to play in this game. I don't even know if he's going to start the season. Yeah, I don't. And I don't. and here's the thing: even if he does come back, I have a hard time believing it's going to be the old Ryan Jensen. Yeah, and for him, you know, I've heard people say you talk of retirement. Um, the fact of the matter is, his body did not take any major uh, abuse last year, just in terms of wear and tear, other than the knee, obviously. So. If he has to get surgery again, if he has to get actual surgery on the knee, they have to go back and repair the ACL and then do stem cells around it, which is what's going on. I don't think he'll be able. He would be able to play this year if they were to do and, it now. And at that point, but it's he like he would be able to come back and play subsequent years. I would think it won't be with the Bucks. Well, how do we know that? How many years does he have left on his deal? I think well, he, he can redo the deal. I guess so, but then and, and Brian, I would think having made the decision to do stem cells and it didn't work out, I think 
knowing what a dude he is, I think he would do the right thing if the Bucks wanted him to come back and play. He would do the right thing and take a very team-friendly deal to do so because he would have played two years at a maximum amount right. without playing for the Bucks. Right. And I think he would feel an obligation to give the organization back some if he were if he wanted to come back and play. He may just at this point say, like, I've made enough money, I've banged my head enough times, I'm just going to retire. I yeah, got and, young kids. and go back. I was going to say, that's fine, go by back the way. to the. He doesn't owe. He doesn't owe anybody anything. I was going to say that, and go back to the last. This is why I don't know if he really would want to go through another rehab process, and I don't want to put words in Ryan Jensen's mouth, obviously. But the press conference that he had a couple of weeks ago, where he talked about his his son, and he got choked up. And he was, he was, I think he was basically crying up there yeah, and like really was. letting himself out there mm-hmm. of how that whole process went. Does Ryan Jensen really want to go through another year of that at this age and this state? He's done everything there is to do in football. He won the Super Bowl. He played with the greatest of all time. He came back to play with him, and it yeah. didn't work out. He's done everything. If he wanted to step away, I don't think anybody would blame the guy. Agreed. But I would also say, you know, I think because of the way he decided to – do this injury and I'm not saying what what he decided was wrong I'm not saying what he decided was wrong to just go stem cells without surgery because it was a partially torn ACL there have been a lot of success with partially torn ligaments being healed by stem cells so and he wanted to come back and play with Brady and you know had the team been playing well and they go deep into the playoffs I think everybody and he could come back and was healthy everybody was said oh what a great decision it just didn't work out it didn't work out and 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 so I would think you know, it, that he may feel like he owes the organization something or he owes the fans something and wanted, you know, to come and uh, try to come back. You only get one chance, yeah. right? And listen, he's so made, like he I said. Be, he's going to be retired for the rest of his life. And like I said, to the point about you mentioned about the money he's made, he's made $81 million from the Bucks. By the time his his contract is up after next year, he will have made $81 million with the Bucks. So he's on a contract for next year. He has a he has an out in 2024, but the Bucks would accrue a 16 million dead cap on that. Interesting. And so then he's a UFA he, in, in 2025. So if he got the surgery right now, he would be ready for training camp next year. Hypothetically, I guess. Yeah. Oh no, definitely, no. without question. Yeah, yeah. Because everything else is healed up. It's yeah. It's probably just. I and I don't know, but I, I'm guessing that, you know. A lot of the other stuff might be healed. It might just be the ACL, ACL or something else. But you know, typically with ACL injuries, if you get the surgery, it's a year. So he would, you know, he would, if, they, if they got it now, mm-hmm. he would be ready to go in training camp next year. So yeah, and but again, he'll be a year. He'll be thirty three years old. It's a year older. It's yeah. more years without having played. You bet. You have played basically gone two years without playing, which could be a positive, honestly. Get the knee right. Yeah, it, again, it just it's up to him if he wants to go to that process again. We'll see. I'm just pointing out, I think I'm at the point where I just, I don't know if I can count on him at the moment. I, I think at this point you don't count on him. And you and you start saying to yourself, is Rob, is Hainsey good enough? Or Leverett. Because they're, Lever they're both in that center competition, which yeah. makes the preseason very important for them. Yeah. And I think both I think both of them need to be playing. And, and both I think, of them will play. And I think they'll they're be both, attrition on I think they're both capable. Yeah. I'm not saying they're Ryan Jensen, a fully healthy Ryan Jensen, but I think they're capable. Like yeah. I'll put it this way: I still, have, I would still have more questions. I'll, I don't know. I don't know if you'd agree. If it's Ryan, if it's Robert Haynes or Nick Leverett playing center in Week One, in a way, I actually feel more comfortable with that than I do about the right guard and the right tackle oh, yeah. at this moment. Yeah, and there, there, are, you know, there are people because I out saw there, them play for a full year. There are you know experts out there that grade. Hainsey's performance uh, as as pretty good, and think that he he were a free agent. I think it was Pat Kerwin who said on his show, if Hainsey were a free agent, that he would be highly desired by other teams. So I I don't think he play. I think the whole offensive line performance last year is completely overshadowed or completely. I, I don't fault them as much as individual players because the offense was so dysfunctional. Yeah, they weren't. It's so dysfunctional. I'm not, they were it, not. It, 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 Leftwich put those offensive linemen in the worst possible position, being a predictable play caller and, and having, of course, a, a quarterback who was stationary. Yeah. You just, that's, you, you as an offensive lineman, you got no shot. And, and even look so where. I don't even want it. And for the run game standpoint, if you know all they're doing is dinking and dunking. Right. You, if you go watch the tape, folks, and I can't tell you how many times I've saw, I saw this, the offensive line would block a run play tremendously well. And, but you don't account for the free safety coming up 
and every time there'd be two safeties in the hole, you know, two yards off the line of scrimmage because they weren't fearful of anything getting behind them. And you can't run you, your running game's going nowhere in that in those instances. So you know you can block the front seven perfectly, but if you got two safeties coming up and filling the hole, you got no shot. And that happened a lot last year. Yeah, and so I, I'm not putting the and bad I was, running game or anything on the offensive line. I will judge them more accurately this year. Yeah, and I was going to say too in regards to an offensive coordinator and a scheme helping out maybe an offensive line that's not as talented. I'll just go use Dave Canales' old team in Seattle. Have they ever been known for having great offensive lines in Seattle? Not really. No. And no. especially last year with Geno Smith as quarterback, but guess what? It worked. They put that they put that offensive line in a much better situation, I would argue, last year than they did in the years prior, and they got the best out of everybody and became a playoff team. And Dave Canales obviously has come from that system. I'm. It's, it's kind of weird. I talk about Dave Canales. He's never called to play anymore, and I feel like that's like so like low on my list of like things yes. I'm worrying about yeah. because of the things that I've seen in practice that you've seen in practice and the way he speaks and holds himself. That's like falling on like my concern level a little bit of what you're going to get out of Dave Canales. Yeah, yeah. So I, this is why this preseason is going to be so fun. These games mean, and I'm talking from the first to the fourth quarter. I'm going to be watching. Yeah, I'll be watching. And uh, by the way, we'll have a little uh, post. Uh, um, I don't know what we're going to call it, a pod, podcast or whatever. We'll have post-reaction on our social media after the game tonight. So if you want to check that out today or tomorrow, uh, this weekend, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll give us uh, impressions of what we thought of the preseason game. You won't have to wait till Monday. So there you go. All right, we'll do a quick break, and um, it could be the biggest fight in fight history, and it's been made. It's going to happen. Uh, breaking news. We'll tell you about that coming up. We're brought to you by the great folks at the Golden Diamond Source and Italian Auto Insurance. Just got my auto insurance redone. They shopped it around for me, saved me $1,000, and Charity gave me great, great customer service. Stayed on the line till 9.30 at night to get it done because I had to have it done by midnight, and they got it done. Saved me money, great customer service. That's what Italian Auto Insurance is all about. 813-877-7799. Tell them JP sent you. Back in three. sitting around the house well the golden diamond source will purchase a variety of different types of coins and bullion their gold buying program includes sterling silver silver platinum and watches they also accept unusual pieces that other jewelry stores do not such as gold bars and sterling silver flatware the list of items they do accept is far more extensive than those they don't so check it out while you're there you can check out the largest collection of any family-owned jewelry store in the country especially with summer coming to an end, the holidays are right around the corner. Never too early to start your holiday shopping, especially if you're planning on getting engaged or have any birthdays or anniversaries coming up. Come on in and find out what buying jewelry should be like with an expert staff of gold and diamond jewelry enthusiasts. And the best part, they treat you like family. And if you're worrying about price, don't. The Golden Diamond Source has something for everyone's budget. They even have a layaway. You stop in and get your favorite piece now. You can have it paid off by Christmas. Plus, you can even finance your purchase with 0% interest for up to five years. And you can get a $5,000 diamond for only $83 a month. It's the greatest folks in the world. Julian Steve Weintraub, the Golden Diamond Source, 3800 Olmerton Road. Always online at thegoldendiamondsource.com. JP here for the Jeeves Law Group, J-E-E-V-E-S. Call for a free case evaluation, 888-9-Jeeves. That's 888-9-J-E-E. Yes, we're local, we're trusted. The law firm brings over 80 years of combined legal experience focusing on clients in Tampa Bay, the state of Florida, and national class action cases. If you're injured, get that free case evaluation, no cost to you. The Jeeves Law Group's focus is on auto, truck, and motorcycle accidents, as well as class action and consumer protection law. Scott Jeeves is a board-certified civil trial lawyer and a certified circuit court mediator practicing in the Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. You hear him on the show all the time. Great guy, big Gator fan, and great for the community. The Jeeves Law Group is a highly skilled team with years of experience that will apply their skills, expertise, and knowledge to assist individuals who have been in an accident with compensation for damages, lost wages, medical expenses, pain and suffering, and property damage. Get that free case evaluation, 888-9-Jeeves. That's 888-9-J-E-E-V-E-S. 
Texas. JP here for my good friends at Italiano Insurance, and they did it again. Once again, Italiano Insurance stepping up with the best customer service. I was in a bind. My old insurance company, my auto insurance, jacked up my rates, so I called Charity at Italiano Insurance, and she stayed till 9.30 at night until she got my insurance done, and guess what? She searched all these companies for me. I didn't do the work she did. Saved me $1,000 on my annual premium. $1,000, folks. That's real, real money, and that's what you get at Italiano Insurance. Great customer service. And here's another note for you, by the way, with hurricane season up. 40% of people in Florida are underinsured. That means if you have something happen during a hurricane and you need replacement costs, you're going to get 40% less than you deserve. Can't let that happen. Call the folks at Italiano Insurance and get them uh, to help you out in both those regards. They will save you money and keep you insured properly. That's 813-877-7799. Great folks in the community. Been doing it for over 60 years. Italiano Insurance. 813-877-7799. Ladies and gentlemen, are you looking to lose weight or just lean up for bathing suit season where there are so many diets and chiropractors and weight loss clinics out there? You don't know where to start, right? We'll start at Bay Area Modern Medical Center. Chris Lugo, PA, and his professional staff will devise a personal plan for you that gets results and will help you keep the weight off. Everybody metabolizes food and supplements differently. Many of these other approaches are designed for the masses. So how's that going to work for you specifically? It's not. Chris will spend one-on-one time with you to find out what works best for you so the weight comes off safely without the use of harmful drugs and side effects. Call 844-977-3477 or go to BAMMC.com. Tell them JP sent you for priority scheduling. 844-977-3477 or BAMMC.com. Pure, pure sports. JP is back on. Welcome back. Fan stream sports. All right, welcome back to the JP Peters and Joe. Brought to you by the great folks. At American Mortgage Services, Scott Fitzgerald will do your loan for you, get you the lowest fees. Very creative as well. Rates are going all over the place, but he will find you the lowest rate, keep the fees the lowest, and he'll help you out with all of your finances. If you need a refi and you still probably have some equity in your home, folks, don't forget about that. And your credit cards are probably a lot higher interest rates than what you'll get in a refi, which is 6 5 6 7%. Better than 29% on your credit cards, right? Even I can do the FSU math on that. Uh, so get that refi, and Scott Fitzgerald is the guy to do it. He's done three loans for me, works with a lot of local coaches and, and athletes, um, but does every loan of every size. So uh, just reach out to him, scott at amstampa.com, scott at amstampa.com. Tell him JP sent you, and uh, he will take great, great care of you. Um, all right, I want to get into a couple other things. The Phil Mickelson we asked Gary Koch about that earlier, and he said, you know, he knows the guy who wrote the book and has no reason to discredit him whatsoever. That guy knows the number. He wanted to, Phil wanted to bet $400,000 on the U.S. Ryder Cup team. Now we know why he's gambled over a billion dollars, because he's a horrible gambler. Literally. Yeah. I don't know. This is another story where I just... Why c- we could have just ended the Phil Mickelson story with the Ocean Course in 2021. That I wish it. Nice. I wish it just would have stopped <laughs> right there <laughs> because ever nice. since then, I, it's like it's so hard to look at him the same way. Yeah. I wish it could have just stopped right there. Well, Rory had a little, little quip for him. Uh, he was asked about the reports that he was going. Of course, Rory would have been on the other team in the Ryder Cup. I think it's so funny, like, in these reporter rooms. And I don't know which tournament this is at, but, like. It's the FedEx uh, Cup St. Jude in Memphis. It's like, I feel like as a reporter, they're probably like, ooh, now we get to ask Rory. Oh, we're gonna God, get, We're yes. going to get a great clip here. Chomping at the bit. So and here. The, and clearly Rory was ready for the question. Yeah, we'll play it here. <laughs> totally different topic. The talk of the golf world is this book excerpt that came out uh, about Phil Mickelson. I'm curious what the. Your reaction, what the reaction in there was when you read about it? Um, I mean, at least he can bet on the Ryder Cup this year because he won't be a part of it. So, <laughs> Mike drop. <laughs> I thought they were mending fences, man. Uh, Guess not. That was that was a zinger. People were like, "Oh, Rory torched Mickelson." Eh, it's a zinger. It's like good. I, that's. 
That could be a good fun. It's a little harmless thing. Yeah, I wish he was playing thing. in the Ryder Cup now. Yeah, yeah, that would add a little spice to it. No Literally. question about that. Yeah, in fact, I'd rather see a one-on-one -on -one golf match between those dudes than the uh, the what is it? Are we, what are we calling this? The boxing max of the, the century here? The billionaire bout. The billionaire bout. The battle of the billionaires. What yes. are we doing? Elon and Zuckerberg are going to fight, MMA style. I guess Dana White's putting this together in the Roman Coliseum. Good versus evil in the Roman Coliseum, baby. Bad versus bad. And good versus evil in my book. Oh my God, yes. And I, yeah, I'm, you know, yeah, I'm on Team Elon. You know what? I'm, I'm on I'm Team on, Elon. I'm Whoop on his ass, please. For I'm God on Team. Sakes. I'm on Team. I don't give a shit. That's what Team <laughs> of I'm on. But I will say, um, <laughs> at least they're at least they're donating the proceeds to the veterans. I appreciate that. Dana White thinks it's a billion dollar gate. Well, pay-per-view, gate, and everything. He thinks it's a billion dollars. As he said, my my, <laughs> my fucking grandmother's going to want to watch this bout. You're right. I've Everybody got a, will. Listen, I've got a laundry list of actual UFC fights that I'm interested no, in seeing no, that would no, do great gates. No. But this is but this is the one. This, this is, is the, the one that everybody's going to tune in on their little Whoop X machine to watch. Little Zuckerberg's ass. And Elon said he has to go get an MRI. To see if he can even fight because oh he's got gosh. back is this and even, neck Is problems. this even legal? Don't we have to, like, <laughs> enter the U.S. Day testing pool? Like, somebody's got to take a piss test or something. Is this even legal? I, 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 yes, of course it's legal. In the Coliseum, this is a disgrace. One of the, one of the most <laughs> iconic <laughs> buildings in the entire world. And we're going to put these two yahoos face-to-face -to -face on each other in White, a ring. Let Dana White produce the highlight of this. Bring in Vince This McMahon. is going to be awful. We'll have a pre-throwdown, smackdown, or whatever the hell you call that stuff. We'll get Triple H in there, and uh, who else is running around? And, I don't know who the hell is running around now. Get Hulk out there, whatever. Just... Yes, yes. We'll do some MMA. This we'll have some horrendous. wrestling, and this then is, that'll be the main This is horrendous. We, in fact, we, we, here's what we should You're do. You're too excited for this. This is what we should do. Okay, I just come up with an absolute brilliant plan here, Dana White. Let's get on the undercard. Let's make the undercard of people that you want to, in this vein, you want to see. Like Fauci versus Rand Paul. Oh, oh God. Come on. Yes. Fauci versus Rand Paul on the undercard. 100%. Biden versus Trump on the <laughs> I just want to climb into a cave. I, I just want to climb into a cave here in this. Trump. Oh my god. Well I can, I will I will have an undercard for you on Monday that we will absolutely love. You will love. Can you imagine the political overtone? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I know who the, the team doctor is gonna be though. Hmm. Chris Lugo. Chris Lugo from Bay Area Modern Medical Center. I'm dragging your ass into this thing. Don't How did I just get dragged into this? I, I, I don't think I've ever seen Nick, Nick this perturbed before. This is the worst. This is the worst part of the show for me. Is when we hit these. He hates politics. I, I hate. To do with I hate all this other stuff. And the the yeah. idea that, that JP is so excited to see these two guys go square head to head in, in a squared circle. Are you like why? Why? Who has interest in that? Well, that's because you don't pay attention to any of the, the overtones. So a lot, the rest of the world is. Who you got, Lugo? Who you got? Elon Musk. Come on, that's a silly question. Right. He's he's like what six one, two ten. Zuckerberg's like five seven one thirty five. Yeah, but I hear that Zuckerberg's doing a lot of training, so maybe he can uh, do a little jujitsu, a little ground and pound. We'll see. Yeah. All fights into the ground eventually, right? So. Yeah, I guess. Whoever can control. I say send in the lions, yeah. gladiator style, right? Let's do. Let's exactly. Do that. Yeah. Oh, that'll be fun. How you doing, partner? You've been making this week. I know you've been working uh, in the ICUs and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, COVID up the old skills back, for the army. Yes. COVID making a comeback. COVID's making a comeback. It's going to get worse. I, I think personally, we'll see what happens. But I think when kids go back to school here next few weeks, it's definitely going to start spreading again. So uh, a few people that are just complaining of like cold like symptoms and then i'll like hey have you checked for covid no I'm like go ahead and swab and they'll swab and they're like oh my god i'm like yeah so but it's 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 been pretty mild i'll be honest with you it's been pretty yeah, mild so far not, this is not that we're not you nobody needs to freak out about this no i don't think you need to be freaking out at this point in time um get your vitamin regimen going but that's that's neither here nor there is and there is a cure for covid right Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> Go ahead, tell them. There is, it's out there. No, I'm, I'm not pushing any Pfizer drugs. Sorry. No, I didn't. It's, it's, I'm talking about hydroxychloroquine. Oh, hydroxychloroquine. Oh, ivermectin. Yeah, there's a treatment. Definitely a treatment for, for that. Definitely. Yes. Uh, but what I'm seeing so far is now, very they, mild they symptoms. They don't need it. Uh, they don't even need that, right? I don't even think they do. Honestly, uh, I, I I haven't seen anybody that sick where they're, they're needing it. Uh, it's just basically mild cold symptoms, just fatigue and for the few days. Take your vitamin D. I mean, this is, well, this is why there's something that we talk about in, in your, in your ads is your immune system, right? This is why you get your immune system as robust as it could be, right? So let's talk a little bit about that. What you can do preventative, right? To, um, what do you call that? Prophylactic medicine here, yeah, right? Where medicine, yeah. So yeah. getting that like gut in order. We talked about that with Nick when he went eating on a uh, binger uh, with, you know, hamburgers <laughs> and how it was differently when he went down on for his honeymoon. So getting that yeah. gut happy and healthy, 60 to 70% of your immune function comes from a good, happy, healthy gut. Um, and people think, well, I don't have pain, so it must be fine. Don't assume. Um, if you got dysbiosis and overgrowth of bad bacteria and yeast inside your gut, it's not going to function top notch. Your car can run on six cylinders if it's an eight cylinder but it's still not efficient, right? So you need to run right. all, all eight cylinders. And eventually it'll break down. You got so it. What, eventually it's going to give, I know we do this a lot, but give the folks out there that might be listening for the first time, what are your, your top five things for gut health in terms of supplements to take and things to do? Prebiotics, probiotics. So fertilizing the soils, we would say, then putting the seed in the soil already. Uh, good, um, Fermented foods such as kefir, K-E-F-I-R, kefir, or people call it, but kefir I call it, um, sauerkraut, pickles. Those are all really great foods to have. Trying to stay away from processed carbohydrates, things that inflame the intestinal wall. That'll give you some gas for a little bit, right? And then, y'all, it's gone. It's, it's better. But it's just like you still got a smoldering smoke going on that's still not healing the gut. Uh, those are the big things. And water, water, water. And vitamin D? Vitamin D, 10,000 international units a day. Zinc, roughly about 100 milligrams a day. Uh, Quercetin, 250 milligrams twice a day. Um, what's my last one? Um, uh, vitamin C, okay, 2,000 milligrams two to three times a day. And that, that'll get your immune system robust. And so if anything comes calling, you just let your body handle it. You get some rest. Correct. And and let and get your immunity, you know, then the, you get your immunity and, and you're good to go. So don't freak out about it. And that, don't freak out. And, you know, contrary to popular belief, the flu also is still around, right? Flu will always be around, right? Exactly. That's not going to place anytime soon. So flu shots are coming around. It's a quad variant, right? They're always guessing on what the strain is going to be. It's a guess. Really, yeah. truly. COVID shot is a guess also. Same thing with flu shot. It's a guess on what the strain is going to be like. Uh, but the flu is worse than COVID right now. Do you recommend flu shots? Because after this fiasco, and like you said, they're just guessing on the flu shot. The only time I've ever gotten the flu in the last 10 years is when my doctor at the time, yeah, talked me into getting a flu shot. Yeah. Yeah. In the army or in military, we love vaccines, right? So yeah, you can, you can not get the flu shot in the military, but good luck. Uh, let me know how your career works out for you when you keep on doing it over and over and over. Um, it is what it is. It's been around for decades. It's pretty damn safe. Um, certain populations need vaccines. Certain populations don't need vaccines. Uh, you're a healthy individual. I don't, I think you're good to go. Um, some people are genetically inclined to get these things, but they probably already know this. Yeah. Uh, Cause they've gotten sick multiple times. If you're a sickly person, you should probably get it. If you're, if you're pretty good and don't get sick a lot, you could probably Correct. Your immune system. Yeah. Okay. Let your immune system do its own fighting. That's what we evolution is, is a beautiful thing for humans. Yeah, I agree with that. Can I think we for, wouldn't uh, be this far if we didn't do it. <laughs> that's right. I'm first of all, I mean, we were just talking about gut health and I am like, I've been, I'm a great example of that, Chris, because I went two weeks cold Turkey of no fast food, anything like that, if you can believe it. And nice. then yesterday I broke, I finally okay. broke yesterday. I will admit I went to Did Chick-fil-A. I went to Chick-fil-A. That's okay. Um, Look, I got drilled in a couple of weeks. But, Stark, Florida, there's nothing. But I was going to say, though, I, I <laughs> tell you what, play. I think I'm going back on cold turkey, though, because it did not hit well with – it did not sit well with me. And I see it now. Like, I went two weeks without it. felt great. 
I ate it one time, and last night I felt like crap. And the but food didn't even that, taste good to me. It didn't even taste good anymore. But it's that it's the punch in the gut, right? Pun right. intended there, because you're like, why the hell am I doing what I'm doing? I don't want to deprive myself. I want to be able to eat. And then you do it, and you're like, oh, that was good going down, but I feel miserable. Yeah, It's that reality check. So I like reality checks every now and then. They're good for you. It was, and now I don't feel like I really want to even entertain it anymore. Right. So I've just – it worked for me. Yeah. Yeah, I've uh, I've been you know since I, I went to see you. By the way, you got you got my blood work back. Not yet. It's still pending. Oh, I, it's I, I got it. I'll send it to you. Oh, did you already? Open it. Yeah, I haven't checked this morning. I'll so I'll, you know, I'll be f- f- you know, as I told you, the the cholesterol was going to be a little high. It was a two twenty nine. Don't care. Cholesterol. That's not that high, right? It's not terrible. No, I don't care. That's, that's antiquated. That's nineteen eighties. We're looking at triglycerides and apoB. Okay, tries weren't great either, but yeah. I'm just out of the, the regular range, so I'm not going to freak out about it. But um, since I got the results back and since I'm, you know, August, late July and August has been, with the exception of a couple of days in Canton, where I partook in some very good. I saw the pictures. Locally stilled <laughs> yeah. just a rum that was just amazing. Um, you know, other than that, I've been real good and I feel good. I feel leaner. I'm starting to, you know, get that, that you feeling. You look a little jacked today. Yeah. Don't I though? Get some, yeah. Yeah, Maybe it's the sure. shirt. It's definitely the shirt. Um, it's a medium. It's it is. I just feel so much better. I've cut out most of the uh, most of all the breads and the rices and the co- those carbohydrates. And it, God, it just makes such a difference. It does it makes such yeah. a difference. Um, so I, I'm on my way to two. Really? I'm at two twenty five. So I'm two ten is the target. So we're gonna we're gonna keep in doing this until we till we get there. But I haven't done. The, I haven't got to the fasting yet. And I know you want me to do the fasting. Is, is a 12 hour fast as is that beneficial? Cause it's like, that's as far as I can get. I am trying to get to 15, but God, it's hard. Cause I finished the show and I'm just, I'm so freaking hungry. The sweet spot is usually around that 16 to 18 hour mark. Oh God. I like intermittent fasting, but it's not something I want someone to do day in and day out. Why? Because you're now you're going to lose that window on protein consumption. All right. And as to, to be a thriving homo sapien, you've got to get enough protein in your diet. So now you're narrowing down that window. So two to three days a week, intermittent fasting, perfect, kind of reset the gut a little bit. But overall, I want you eating because I want that muscle to thrive. You want strong muscles. That's why you got to weight train to keep your bones strong in order to keep you as a functional, mature adult. Mm -hmm. And Nick's not thinking of this at 20 something years old, but when you get to your fifties, sixties, JP, Mm -hmm. you're going to start sensing, Oh shit, I'm getting old and Hey, and I'm not as in good shape as I want to be. What do I need to do? You got to get that ball rolling in your forties and fifties at the latest, the earlier, the better, but you got to keep bones strong. All right. Got one other question for you. And this is in the pediatric realm from nutrition, because I'm dealing with this right now. Um, the younger, the ten-year-old and the seven-year-old, um, Ashley's kids. I'm step stepfathering now. Um, they don't eat protein. They just eat all sugar, and it'll last. You know, we get these behavioral ups and downs, right? They just, and I'm like, you guys, it's not because you're bad kids. You're not eating. You have to eat protein. Am I wrong here? I mean, no, does, does this affect their their behavior if they're not eating any proteins at all? Yeah, 100% because there's that bit, there's been multiple studies proving that the healthy healthy happy gut actually has brain interaction too. Anxiety depression disorder has been associated with dysbiosis, overgrowth of bad bacteria. So no, it's 100%. Some kids have very strange palates and they're very finicky and then there's some that hey look it is it's in the house that are going to eat quick f- processed foods. Sometimes you just got to slowly introduce those good quality proteins and, you know, eventually you'll change habits over time. But it does affect behavior. No question. about 100%. It. Yes. I just want to make sure they know yes. this is not stupid me talking about it. And life will be so much better if you just eat eat your damn peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It ain't that bad, right? right. <laughs> it's yeah. peanut butter. It's got, it's got protein in it. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, all right, partner, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you and what's going on over there at Bay Area Modern Medical Center. Best way always is go to the website, click book online. You'll see the schedule. You'll be able to see times, days that work best for you. I'm going out of town playing Army again here in the next couple of weeks, so my you know, schedule's a little squirrely there. So you'll always see it. That's the best way, B-A-M-M-C dot com. Thank you for your service, and we'll uh, chat with you next week. Thanks, partner. Thanks, guys. Talk to you then. Chris Lugo there, Bay Area Modern Medical Center. Yeah, it's kids, you know, I know your parents are dumb, and I know you know everything, but um, every once in a while, we get a little nugget that might help you. I mean, I'll be honest. The story, your chicken nugget. The story you told me off air, which we won't say on air, but I've had, I was like that as a kid, too, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I think we all go through it. But it's, it, it's just... I mean, not me. I ate everything when I was a kid. <laughs> I didn't have any, that wasn't my problem. But uh, yeah, you're just you're. It, and I'm like telling them, you, you know, it's not you. It's your it's your gut. It's your head. It's your brain. It's gonna you're gonna be so much more emotional, and every little thing's gonna set you off if you're not if you're have they, hypoglycemic have, have, have and your these blood kids sugar ever, so low. See, this is how I was as a kid. Like I, I'm a chicken wing fiend. Still am. Always have been. Have they ever had a chicken wing? Yeah, but they they. they they eat, you know, the chicken nuggets. Like, are we just going to say, do we eat the basics here? Yeah, they eat the, they'll eat, they like chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese, which is not the greatest stuff in the world. And they'll eat some some vegetables at time. But, I mean, protein. Like, the chicken nuggets have protein in them. Mm-hmm. The peanut butter and jelly has protein in it. I make them a protein shake, and they don't, don't drink it because it doesn't taste right. It's like, God, you got to eat this stuff or you're just going to be a disaster. <laughs> you're going to be a disaster. It's awful. It's like, come on. Just helping you help a brother out a little bit, you know, but we'll get it right. They're good kids. And, and that's, that's what you want to help them. You want to help them. All right. We got preseason football tonight. Cannot wait. We'll give you a little uh, uh, post game reaction. Just check our socials uh, at fanstream JP at the JP Peterson show. We'll put it up on Instagram, Facebook, all those places. Uh, and uh, in fact, we, we should probably put it on the uh, podcast as well on Apple and Spotify. Check that as well tomorrow for some uh, instant reaction to the game. Have a great weekend, everybody. Go Rays. We'll talk to you on Monday.